say Capel Cowboys, but that's what he was. Uh, I'm from Capel. That's my hometown. I remember him as a senior just yesterday. And suddenly he's got to come out here and lead the second second uh, team in the country. Uh, it's almost impossible. This is why this is a big ball game, to see if one of these two quarterbacks can survive it. And the uh, Tulsa team, you look at the season for Keith Burns, Hurricane, started out great, a 51 nothing win against Indiana State, but they've lost six in a row since then. Well, this is the worst scenario, the worst nightmare, the worst everything for a guy like Keith Burns to come in here and play in this stadium with a mad, mad Oklahoma team on his hands. That's a tough thing, and I feel sorry for the guy, frankly, because I was I was a coach on about the level at Arkansas State when I had to go to Alabama and Texas A&M and in those places. That's a tough thing with a young team. He's trying to do it the right way, and maybe, you know, if his team can just play hard and get out of here alive, he'll be very happy. So we have a Sooner team trying to get back on track after losing to Nebraska last week. It's a Tulsa team just trying to get on track, period. The starting lineup's a kickoff when we come back on Fox Sports Net. Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, Owen Field, Bill Jones, Larry Lacewell, the Sooners and the Golden Hurricane. Let's check in down on the sideline with Zach Klein. Zach? All right, Bill, thank you very much. For the first time in 672 days, the Sooners take to the field following a loss from the week before. As you mentioned, the last loss, last century, December 31st, 1999, in the Independence Bowl against Ole Miss. And we went through that championship run, virtually healthy at quarterback. Josh Heupel was the man, and he was healthy. Not this time around. Nate Hibble, as you mentioned, will start. He is battered and bruised though. Jason White, the backup quarterback, he is out with a sprained knee. No ifs, ands, or tears about it. Since I've been here, I've never said anything that is not true to the media or to the public. And a sprain, whether it be to an ankle, a shoulder, a knee, is damage to a ligament. That, that is what a sprain is. Uh, I guess I didn't realize I needed to define what a sprain is. But now, Coach Stoops is not a doctor, and I am not a weatherman, but I will play one right now. The field here at Memorial Stadium is kind of like a putting green. It can hold about 18 inches in an hour. They received an, an inch and a half here this afternoon as it rained for about two hours. It is dry, maybe a little damp, but it will not be a factor. Bill, back to you upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Zach. The game time temperature here at Owen Field, 61 degrees. The humidity very high after the late morning downpour that drenched the entire state of Oklahoma, but it doesn't put a damp on what is an autumn ritual here. Fans come from all over the state and beyond to watch Oklahoma football, and it's a cross-state rivalry renewed today. Tulsa kicks, Oklahoma receives. And from the three-yard line, Antoine Savage right up the middle. Nearly to the 35-yard line. A Sooner team that was held to 10 points by Nebraska a week ago. And Nate Hibble gets the start at quarterback. Jason White started a week ago as the Sooners offense huddles on the sideline. Hibble put up some decent numbers against the Cornhuskers a week ago. Completed a touchdown drive, the lone touchdown drive of the game for the Sooners against the Huskers. Hibble operating from the shotgun as the Sooners start from their own 33-yard line, first and 10. Swings it out to the right side. And Quentin Griffin to about the 37-yard line where he is brought down. Bring up a second and six for the Sooners. And let's check out the Sooners offensively as Nate Hibble is the man in charge. Jason White out with a sprained knee. Hibble with seven touchdowns, seven interceptions on the season. The men up front, led by the left tackle, the veteran Frank Romero. And the backs and receivers, Mark Clayton leading the way. Out to the left side, to the 40-yard line. Pick up a three yards or so. That'll bring up the first third down situation of the game. Curtis Fagan on the receiving end of the pass from Hibble. So, Larry, the first third down situation is going to be third and three for Hibble and the Sooners. Right, they've been really concerned. It looks like they're kind of letting uh, Hibble, who's a little more veteran than you think, feel his way about. He's thrown a couple of simple routes, but it's third and short. A three-man front for the Hurricane. 
to come with the blitz. Hibble gets it away to the 45-yard line. Two Fagan, first down, Sooners. Well, you're right. They came with what we call a zone blitz. They kept a free safety in the middle, and uh, these teams mirror each other a little bit other than personnel on defense. Let me just check out the hurricane on defense. It is a young Tulsa team. And up front, getting the start, Andrew Franklin for an upperclassman at one end position. Michael Delaney, a transfer from Oklahoma, is in the middle on defense. And a young secondary as well. The give is to Quentin Griffin. And he gets forward for a yard or two to bring up a second down play for the Sooners. That really is consists as kind of a quarterback a tailback draw where he reads it and he hands the ball off to the tailback. Uh, I know Oklahoma would like to establish some running game. Not a whole lot, but some. That's a difficult to start with. In fact, it will be just a one-yard pickup statistically a gain of, of one and brings up a second and nine with three receivers out to the left side for Hibble. And the throw to the left side, Josh Norman past the midfield strike, tries to muscle his way forward, gets to about the 48-yard line. Well, if this is the way Tulsa's going to uh, attempt to defense Oklahoma, it could be a long day. They're, they rush three people, and, and they drop with eight. You're going to see here they've got only three people rushing the passer. Then again, they've got the trip side. They make six, seven yards. They're, they're going to try not to give anything big to Oklahoma. You can see it right off the bat. Texas A&M played them a little bit this way uh, last year. And had some success against the Sooners. It wound exactly up being right. a high-scoring game, but... Of course, the Aggies had a big lead on the Sooners in the second half of that game. From the Tulsa 48, we take a look at the series history. The Sooners with 11 wins, 19 meetings. Tulsa won the most recent one. And a whistle is a snap back to Hibble. And for the second straight time, the Sooners with a third down situation here. This one longer than the first one, which was a third and three situation. I sometimes wonder against these kind of part of the snap. He starts offense. Five yards through. Receive third down. I sometimes wonder if third and five, third and six, third and seven makes any difference to these football teams. It amazed, it amazed me. I'm an old wishbone guy, and that'd be so critical. But I don't think third and three or third and eight are. They're all the same to me. And it will be third and ten for Bob Stoops Sooners. Hurricane show blitz. Three-man rush. Hibble has time. Off to the left side. And Quentin Griffin will be run out of bounds right at the midfield strike. For a pickup of three. And the Sooners will be forced to punt. Well, this isn't the start. I know that the Sooners wanted it all. But again, like I told you, I think you're going to see a very conservative package out of it. It's also, as a matter of fact, they're going to continue to rush three people. Oklahoma has got to probably run the football. Uh, it's uh, they're daring them to do it. And we'll see later. For Keith Burns, the head coach of the Hurricane, a defensive coordinator, Arkansas and USC before getting the head coaching job at Tulsa. Jeff Ferguson with the punt. Inside the 10 at the five-yard line, Donald Schultz fields it and is brought down quickly. The Sooners can cover kicks. They really work hard on special teams. They're impressive to be watching in practice. Back with more from on field in a moment on Fox Sports Net. Well, the Sooners own the field position battle early as Jeff Ferguson punts the Hurricane back deep in their own end of the field. It's turned out to be a very nice afternoon for football. A heavy downpour about 10 o'clock when it hit Norman and all across the state of Oklahoma. There are some vacant seats here at Owen Field. It is a sellout, though. The Sooners trying to get back on track. He's played a whole game here against Baylor a couple of weeks ago. Had the 20-game win streak snapped a week ago with a 17-game home winning streak. And the Sooners try to make it 18 in a row. Tulsa takes over at its own seven-yard line. The quarterback is Tyler Gooch. And the give on the right side past the 10, past the 15, almost to the first down marker. Eric Richardson on the carry. All right now, Tulsa. Richardson up near the 17-yard line. Tulsa on offense, the true freshman out of Tulsa Union, Tyler Gooch, gets the start. Ran for over 100 yards last week. Kevin Schaefer anchors the offensive line, the senior left tackle. 
And Donald Scholes, the man from Enid, second in the nation in receiving. Number 87, a man to watch offensively for Tulsa. And it is the first down for Gooch and the Hurricane on the first play. They get 10 yards. Simmons with a four-man defensive front as Gooch works from the shotgun. And again, it's Richardson past the 20 and up near the first down stake again. I think Tulsa's trying to show Oklahoma they can run the football. Actually, they're off to mirror each other. They're in the shotgun. It's the same little, same little draw play that uh, will sit right here. He'll ride the guy back to the right side. It blocks down. Real good running Gregory, right here. I think that uh, Tulsa's got to do this. They've got to run the clock. They've got to keep the clock going. Uh, try to get some first downs, and they're doing a good job early in this ball game. Nine yards for the Duncanville, Texas product, Eric Richardson. It's second and one, and this time, nowhere to go, a loss of yardage. Tommy Harris, the true freshman at defensive tackle for the Sooners, makes the stop. I think you might trick me twice, and you're not going to do it three, <laughs> three times in a row, and he did it the same play. All three times, this time, the Sooners stun it, and here they come scot free. Matter of fact, they tell me that this young man right here, Harris, is better than Leroy Selman. <laughs> hey, I got to see this. I'm anxious to see this. This whole ball game, you tell me he's better than Selman. He has started every game at defensive tackle for the Sooners this year. He has started every game at defensive tackle since the fourth grade in his career. Donald Scholes, the leading receiver for the Hurricane, takes the toss from Gooch and gets to the 25. <laughs> That was what we called just a quick screen, and uh, again, they were not successful. They had their little flurry there, and this happens to a uh, team sometime like the Sooners. I'm sure they're not coming out acting like they're playing Nebraska here right off the bat, and they're a little bit flat. I can tell that defensively, but they've done their job, and now they're going to get pretty good field position. Fourth and two, Casey Lipscomb on to punt. Curtis Fagan is deep for the Sooners. is a good one over the head of Fagan bounces inside the 20 yard line and out of bounds at around the 15. I don't, I don't know how much wind is blowing but it looked like a lot on that punt. Uh, I, I see the flags blowing. That was a heck of a punt. They needed to swap ends with the Sooners. Uh, if they can play the kind of game they're doing they got a chance. So far so good for Tulsa. Josh Norman on the receiving end of the short pass from Nate Hibble as the Sooners start 86 yards away, pick up four yards on first down. It'll bring up a second down and six from their own 18. We saw Teddy Lehman come out of the game limping after the third down play by Tulsa, and he is on the bench being attended to. And take a look at number 11, Teddy Lehman. Looks like an ankle. Well, you know, the Sooners, uh, they play all their starters on, uh, on their special teams, and that's the price you pay sometimes. Uh, you know, you got Rocky Cowboys, you got your starting last back going down. This, this could be a blow, but he's up moving around, so he may be back. Oh, pick up to the 28-yard line. The pass play. First down for the Sooners and Nate Hibble. Ten yards on the pickup on the pass play. Two backs alongside Hibble in the backfield for Oklahoma. Throws downfield to Savage. Three Hurricanes surround Savage, and he comes up with the football. It is a catch beyond the 40-yard line. First down, Oklahoma. That's an outstanding play by Hibble. You can uh, see that he created the play on his own. It, the protection really wasn't there as good. He ran up in the pocket. You'll see right here. This is the first deep route they've attempted to throw. You can see him coming up in the pocket. This is an excellent throw, excellent catch. Longest play so far for the Sooners. Uh, Tussle's going to be very conservative. They're not going to try to let him get behind them. 
Antoine Savage, 17 catches on the season. Pick up a 13 to the 41. And now Hibble caught for a loss at the 39-yard line. Well, shades of Barry Switzer. <laughs> that was an option play, and it did not look like Jack Miller by any means for all you old Sooner fans out there. Uh, they tried to overload. It looked like he did not check the playoff. They had, a, they had an end coming hard. Wasn't a good play, evidently. Here's a play that worked last week going the opposite way against Nebraska. Speed option, second down and 12. Little looks to throw over the middle. Short to Trent Smith. The big tie end to the 50-yard line. I'll tell you one thing, this, try, this tight end, uh, Trent Smith, has really emerged lately. He's kind of been the go-to guy, and people are playing him so conservative and backing up so far. You've got, here he comes on the crossing route. You can see he is his friend at the moment because he can dump the ball off. They can turn it up and make seven or eight yards. He did it. They're in now in third down and one. Uh, this is what I think you're going to see a whole lot of in this ball game with a three-man rush. Quarterback sneak right up the middle and get nearly 10 yards. Well, it's obvious I don't think I was ready or Tulsa was ready. <laughs> I was shocked. I'm looking up and I think, what in the world is that? Here he comes, quick sneak. They huddle. They got up there quick. Tulsa wasn't lined up. Uh, good coaching. Uh, you guys that do those type things to defensive coordinators, it's really unfair. I hated them. You'd see that a lot last year with Heupel. Right. Three-man rush. First down at the Tulsa 41-yard line. And a whistle. This is the snap is made to Hibble. Looks like the Sooners will start out first and 15 here. Prior to the snap, full starts, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. That'll march Stoops' offense back to the 46-yard line. It'll be first down and 15. The uh, Sooners on their first possession of the game did get a first down, and then in part due to a false start, had to punt the ball away. Two first downs on this possession, and from the 46. The option to the left side, the pitch to Griffin. And lots of running room down the sideline and knocked out of bounds. Inside the 30, inside the 25. What you have there is the speed option, and you can see it here. We, uh, no, I think you're going you're gonna to be able to see the quarterback come right down the line right here, pitch the ball. This guy makes a great block. Here comes Greg Pruitt. No, it isn't Greg. Wait a minute. <laughs> but anyway, you see the, the ability, what they do. They go to the line. They outnumber the people. We, I do know that play. That's the old option play, and it did look like Jack Miller in that time. It did. It looked like Greg Pruitt from 30 years ago, a 5'6", right. Quentin Griffin. Picks up all the way to the 24, first and 10. Throw over the middle, incomplete. And the first incompletion of the day for Hibble. Well, again, they, they ran what we call a zone blitz, and the, the zone was wide open. The player was wide open. There's just one problem. He dropped it. I think uh, Hibble is coming out and playing awfully well right now. There's nothing wrong with his game. It doesn't look like anything wrong with his head. Now we'll see if that continues throughout the ball game. Nine straight completions, and then the incompletion here. It's second down and 10 for the Sooners. A drive that started way back at the Oklahoma 14-yard line. To the right side to Mark Clayton. And Clayton inside the 10 down near the 5-yard line. Well, that's what we call a slip screen. We can't run this football. They just play and throw football. As you can see here, you see the offensive lineman release downfield. You can't do that in pro football. You can in college. It's a great, great play. I wish we ran the play in pro football. Pretty good run, too. And the key there is the lineman in college can release if the pass is behind the line of scrimmage. That's exactly right. It's nothing looks like a punt return. So first and goal after the pickup of 18. Clayton on the receiving end. Now Savage in motion to give to Griffin in trouble. Outside the 10-yard line. That's what we call a no block. <laughs> Nobody blocked that guy. Yeah, I promise you that. I don't know. That had to be a butt. The Sooners aren't as sharp as they probably want to be. To leave that guy untouched, he probably ran a stunt. That's a little bit tough. Uh, this has got to be a tough territory for the Sooners. 
I always felt like once you got down in the 10-yard line, myself on defense, we're going to play pretty good pass defense now. Can you run the ball? And now they're backed up, and I'm sure they're not going to attempt to run the ball. Sooners had troubles late in the first half against the Cornhuskers last week. Once they got inside the five-yard line, Hibble with the fade around left side to Wolfolk, and it is beyond his reach. Well, he actually uh, led him a little bit too far. I, I don't like the pass. The play has always driven me crazy. Uh, he threw the ball back behind. It should have been over his head, over his right shoulder. It was just a little bit too deep. You're going to see it right here. If he, you see where the ball is over on the left side, he should have led him to his right. It's just a little bit too far. Not a real good throw. Second incompletion for Hibble. As Wolfolk, who starts at cornerback. He's trying to hit him with that one. Now it's third and goal from the 11. Has time. Finds a man. Smith is big tight in, trying to carry about three hurricane tacklers to the goal line, but unable to. Well, Smith turned uh, actually about a four yard gain in about eight. He, he made a great run there. You're going to see him. He, he has been such a factor in, in the last two or three weeks. Boy, he is a big, big target. Watch him turn. Watch how hard he is to get down. They can't get him down. They can't get him down. He made that on his own. And the Sooners look like they want to go for it on fourth and goal from the two-yard line. And Tulsa, Coach Keith Burns, opts for a timeout. Well, I think that's... Kibble and the Sooners try to score when we come back. Kibble and the Sooners back out there. 4-12 to go in the first quarter. And, Larry, the Sooners are going to go for it on fourth and goal at the two. Well, I think it's a message. Hey, we're better than you. Hey, you I'm guaranteeing, would, hey, would they do this against Nebraska? Would they do no. it against Texas? No, that's a long two yards. It is. Uh, it's on Stoops' part, but again, he's better than they are, I think. We'll see. Checking off his Hibble. Now back in the shotgun. He's got two wide receivers out the side. Two receivers on the right side as well. And under pressure, uh, he is set. And Tulsa is up to the challenge. Sooners cannot score. Well, that's the bad good news. The bad news is they didn't score any points, and the good news is it was a pin deep. It was an all-out blitz. You can see them coming. Uh, we get the replay. A hard time. Uh, there was a guy not protected. If he had been protected, maybe he'd gotten it. You're going to see him right up the middle. Here comes an untouched linebacker. He's got Hibble. Hibble did a good job, really, of getting loose, but then he was thrown for loss because they all out. One of the rare times they blitz. They blitz because no one could run deep. He burns true freshman Josh Dupree with the blitz. And now Tyler Gooch on first and ten at the nine-yard line gets out past the ten. The big play on fourth and goal at the two. And Tulsa stops the Sooners with the sack. And in sync, Keith Burns at the top of your screen. Bob right-hand side at the bottom, and Burns likes what he sees out of his defense. I think you can tell which one was that. <laughs> Burns was not happy a week ago with his defense. Gave up 63 points to San Jose State. And second and nine, Gooch throws incomplete. for the Hurricane, Rocky Calvis, a stellar linebacker for the Sooners. Defensively, stack up this way. Tommy Harris, the true freshman at right tackle. And the linebackers, Lehman back in there after the twist of the aim early on in this one, alongside Calvis. Wolfolk and straight the corners, Roy Williams and Brandon Everidge, the safeties. What a secondary for the Sooners. Had a flag on the play. It's holding against Tulsa. Well, this is a desperate situation for Tulsa, I assure you, because in these kind of games, you'd be surprised if you could punt 10 or 12 times. You're really happy. I'm serious. If you don't turn the ball over, this is a big down, third and eight, you're backed up. If they don't turn the ball over and they punt, they'll probably Gooch making his fourth start of the season. The quarterback controversy of Tulsa on third and nine. Throws complete to the right side, but not enough for a down inside the 15-yard line. Another flag. That was what we call a sprint out pass, and what they're trying to do 
here. They're trying to avoid any type of inside blitz by the Sooners. When you take the ball and move, it's a moving pocket. And now, all of a sudden, they keep getting the penalty. Second straight time, a hold call. Second straight time declined by the Sooners. It sets up a fourth and four. The question was to Daryl Wimberly, the sophomore out of Tulsa Union. And normally, Curtis Fagan is deep for the Sooners. Punch. Instead, it is the freshman out of Texarkana, Texas, Brandon Jones, who is deep for the Sooners, standing back at his own 40-yard line. Waiting the punt from Casey Lipscomb, who sent one 61 yards his first time. He's over 40 yards a boot. This one will not go 61, but Brandon Jones with his first punt return as a Sooner and has a lot of running room. Straight up the middle, inside the 35, nearly to the 30-yard line. The Sooners had a return on him, what we call a middle return. That's got to be exciting for a freshman to break it right back up through the off the bat. Uh, they work so hard on the special team. You'll see it right here. Watch this young freshman catch the ball. Makes a good cut on the inside. Right back up the middle of the field. That's what we call a middle return. He wasn't trying to get started. Came close to the touchdown. Great field position, too, for the Sooners. Out of Liberty Ilo High School in Texas, the true freshman, Brandon Jones, some recruiting services had him as the seventh best wide receiver in the country coming out of high school last year. Sooners have it in Tulsa's end of the field, first down at the 32. And Smith trying to hold on, it is incomplete. That was about a seven-yard pass. Uh, this is typical of the Oklahoma offense. They went to the tight end right there. You know what I can never understand? They used to get sick of our wishbone days when we made five yards running. If you throw for five yards, that makes everybody happy. And this is the nature of the offense. They're willing to take five and six, five and six. Didn't get it that time. We'll see this time. Hiddle's third incompletion. He completed his first eight attempts of the day. He's now 12 for 15. Throwing the ball early and off. And complete this time to the left side. Curtis Fagan inside the 25. Close to a first down. Looks like a a yard away. Again, this is the, the slip screen, and I'll try to show it to you uh, on the telescope. Here, I'm just fancy for this thing. Here we come. You'll see these linemen right here. They're starting downfield right here. It's just a screen pass. It's all in the world. I'm not very good with this thing. I, the, the athletic director kept these things locked up where I used to go. Oh, now, there they there go, for example, Hibble took a big blow. They don't want that to happen very much, and that's the first time he's been in. Third down play. Hibble has room inside the 20. He's hit again. He loses his helmet. He has a first down inside the 15. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's getting a chance to check out those concussion problems. That's the loudest chair of the day, and it's not because of the long run. It's because the quarterback got up. <laughs> Somebody needs to teach him how to slide it. We got an NFL deal where they know how to hook slide. I teach him out there, give him to the baseball coach, and say, look, you got to learn how to do that. You're too valuable to us right now. Man, a live good run, but what a lick. Of course, Larry Lacewell here, the director of college and pro scouting for the Cowboys since 1992, former defensive coordinator at Oklahoma back in the good old days in the 70s. The glory <laughs> A couple of national championships with the Sooners. Three world championships with the Cowboys. And a timeout called by the Sooners here. As they have it at the 13-yard line. A Hibble has been hit a lot in games this year and delivers a blow as last time, loses his helmet. You know, those blows are a little bit easier. I know people have a hard time understanding that. But when we were an option team, our quarterbacks didn't get hurt going down the field very much because they were delivering the blow. When you are a drop back quarterback and you're standing back there and you're at the mercy of a guy, you're not delivering the blow. They're delivering it when they turn you upside down and you're in the pocket. That head hits that hard ground. These kind of blows a guy can't kind of protect. He didn't exactly protect himself, but you can. Uh, I'd rather see a guy running downfield, frankly, than I had taking the blow back in the pocket. Larry, I mentioned you were the defensive coordinator with the Sooners. A couple of national championships in 74 and 75. 30 years ago this month, you faced the Cornhuskers, though, here at Owen Field. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing I'm remembered for. 
<laughs> That's the only time, you know, the guys don't score in the second half my last five years. And I got to look at this stuff. But I there is Jack Mildred to John Harrison for a touchdown for the Sooners. Both defenses were in deep trouble at that. 35-31, Huskers won it. Hibble has time and complete about the 11-yard line. That is Mark Clayton. That, uh, that play took about an hour to run for a two-yard game. That's right. Uh, that's the nature of this offense. I really like it. They, it's, some people call it basketball on grass or whatever, but I'll tell you one thing. There's a lot of fouling going on out there that they never call it. If it's basketball on grass, well, there were a lot of picks being set as these guys were crossing on that little short route. Michael Delaney, a transfer from Oklahoma, made the stop for Tulsa. Three receivers out to the left side. Hipple looks left, throws, intended for Fagan, can't come up with it. Well, the ball was thrown behind Fagan, but you've got to catch that ball. This offense, you have got to catch the football. And it wasn't a great pass, but the man alive, it puts him in. It puts him, you'll see it right here. What Hybel, I think the, the ball is very catchable. Stone back behind the receiver, catch the ball. He threw it in, didn't catch it. The Sooners have been plagued with drop balls this season. As I understand it, last year they didn't drop them. That's right. Had some drops last week against Nebraska. Some catchable balls. The Huskers had some defenders on the receivers as well. But some drive stalled. Now with time, he'll now flushed out. He will run it inside the 10 to the 8. Well, actually, this time, Hibble, if we can see that again on the wide angle, you're just going to see a guy wide open over here on the left. Hibble has got to quit holding the ball. You've got to get rid of the football. If we'll take a look at this right over here, this guy right here is wide, wide open. open. Come on, Hibble. I know, he, I know he has a progression read. He's trying to get over there. As you see, he read across here. He didn't get to the guy over here, which was a touchdown. They don't want him running. We'll get better at this thing. <laughs> Very good, though, Larry. You did a good job with that one. Well, now on fourth and five, the Sooners will settle for the field goal attempt here. Tim Duncan has it up, and it is through, and the Sooners are on the board with half a minute left here in the first quarter of this one. The Sooners are on the board. They lead it three to nothing. It was an Oklahoma drive that started at the 32. It stalls out at the Tulsa eight-yard line, and Duncan has the field goal to put the Sooners on the board. Well, I wonder sometimes if it's fourth and five, a little harder to make for the two. <laughs> he decided to get the field goal this time, and I don't blame him. One thing he uh, is probably going to play now, he's lost the field position, but at least he came up with the three points. He has got the touchdown. Well, get your tickets now to see the nationally ranked 2001 Big 12 Tournament champion Sooner basketball team. The regular season tips off at home for the first round preseason NIT matchup against Central Connecticut on on Monday, November 12th, one week from Monday at 7 o'clock at Lloyd Noble. Tickets range from $15 to $20 for the general public, $10 for OU students, a limited number of season tickets still remain as well, so call the OU Athletic Ticket Office. It's 1-800-456-GO-OU, G-O-O-U. Or you can log on, www.soonersports.com, to order your tickets. Kelvin Sampson Sooners had a inter-squad scrimmage just prior to the football game today at the old field house adjacent to Owen Field here. And Duncan will kick it. And from Clinton, Oklahoma, Duncan has put the Sooners on the board. Deep in the end zone, and Tulsa wisely pulled down it. And the Hurricane will have the best field position of the afternoon. The previous drive started at the 7 and the 9. You know, sometimes you get in this stadium and the wind starts blowing, and they, I think they've got the wind with them. And if, if I'm correct or not, I can't see. But man alive, to stay backed up all day is a nightmare in this stadium. I assure you because the crowd noise, you got the end zone on top of you back there. These guys need to get the ball somehow, some way to at least the 40 or 50. First down from Tyler Gooch out of the shotgun. Looks to the right side, throws complete, and brought down quickly by Matt McCoy after a short pickup. Well, as you can see, what Tyler, what Tulsa, pardon me, Tulsa, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler <laughs> what Tulsa's trying to do, and Tyler, they're moving the pocket. You see him not staying in a lot of drop back. 
that's really a compliment to the Sooner defense and the all-out pass rush they have. Trying to give this guy a chance. That was complete to his tight end, Jared Roach. It will be second and seven as we are at the end of the first quarter. And the Sooners lead the Hurricane. It's 3-0 through one quarter here at Owen Field. Sooners lead the Golden Hurricane 3 0 through one quarter. Let's go down to the sideline. Zach Klein standing by with a special guest. Zach? Yes, Bill, no doubt about a special guest. Calvin Sampson getting ready to begin his eighth season as the head basketball coach at the University of Oklahoma. A week from Monday, coach, you tip things off regular season. It is hard to believe, but basketball is here. You know, used to in the old days, we'd have uh, 35 to 45 practices. Now you only have 20 to 25, and it's great for the players, but as a coach, I always wish you had a little bit more time. Ranked 22 in the latest coaches poll, the first coaches poll of the year. Your team, how are you looking so far in the first two weeks you've seen? I, I like this team. I, I think we're going to be good. We've got uh, a lot of kids that can score once they pick up our, our defensive schemes and, and uh, how hard we want them to compete. I think this team has a chance to be very good. Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, top five teams in the conference loaded. Big 12, one of the toughest conferences in the country? No question. Oklahoma State, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas. Our top five, I think, is as good as any top five in any league. Coach Sampson, appreciate your time. Good seeing you. Bill, I'll send it back to you upstairs. All right. Fitting that the basketball coaches here. We've talked about the OU offense being basketball on grass. Tulsa trying to do something offensively. A third down play, and Gooch in trouble and dropped at the 17-yard line. Well, what you have is, again, the Sooners blitz. Uh, they really picked the thing up awful well. I think you can see that. If we have a replay here, you're going to see that the, the two linebackers are coming up in the middle here. Here they come. They're picked up. The quarterback sat in there, man. Wait on him. A little panic shot. I don't blame him. If I were a freshman out there, I think I would probably drop on one knee, too. He takes the sack, a loss of seven. Curtis Fagan is back deep. Brandon Jones, the true freshman out of Texarkana, Texas, had a long return last time. Fagan says get away, and Oklahoma hop inside the 45, around, a, around the 41-42 yard line. It's going to be great field position for the Sooners once again. Well, again, uh, it's... it's, it's uh, from the 41, the Sooners will start when we come back to Norman. From the Tulsa 41-yard line, the toss to the running back, Clinton Griffin, inside the 40, down to the 25, a pickup of 16 yards for Clinton Griffin. What it was, if we get the wide angle, I'll show you this play. What it was is a quick pitch. We've got the three outside receivers. You can almost tell what they're going to run because they're all bunched in together, and at the same time, they come right down off the hash block, and it's a pretty easy play for the center. Sooners with 127 total yards in the first quarter to 27 for Tulsa. Sooners lead it 3-0. We are early in the second quarter. Four-man rush for Tulsa. Flips it out to the right side to Griffin. Eludes one man, run out of bounds near the 20. Well, here we go again. Another third down. Fancy that. It seemed like this whole thing uh, has been third and four, third and five. Well, second down this time. Well, we made a first the last time. I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> you only have oh, what, what happens? I, I really feel so. I, I think about the poor Tulsa defense. Uh, man alive. To be camping out on this end of the field the whole time is a hard day's night, I tell you. Spoken like a true defensive coordinator there. Please get him out of there. Josh Norman inside the 20, a flag down, two flags down, and that one's going to come back, it would appear. Well, I think we'll probably have a holding, and I'm sure Coach Stoops won't like that. We've now had, uh, what's this, our third penalty? Uh, sometimes we call them silly penalties, and you hate to see a guy already made yards, already up the field, and get a penalty. This uh, this is going to hurt the Sooners, it already has. This is why the score is as close as it is. Takes away a nice gain by Norman inside the 15 to the 12. What would have been a first down. Here we go the, again. The, the quick swing. You see the you see the holding. I'm gonna do it right here by this young man, Antoine Savage. He's got a hold of him. There goes the uniform around. 
Savage, you cannot hold. <laughs> and without the hold, Norman might not have got down to the 12-yard line anyway. Out of testing. 29-yard line. It's second and 14. Griffin to the 20. Well, as I told you before, you're seeing a very, very conservative defense out of Tulsa. This, this, this defensive game plan isn't all bad. I, you know, they're hoping that the clock will run on both sides of the field. They're hoping that they don't give the centers anything big. The clock runs, and each play, the centers are running a lot alike. They swing it to the right, swing it to the left. They're not going downfield a whole lot because of the nature of the defense that Tulsa is running. From the 20-yard line. Sooners have the third down play here and on third down conversions three for six in this game. And a whistle once again. Twice before the Sooners have been flagged for false starts. Man, would you think that this team is really fired up? Snap and uh, against the offense. That's a five yard penalty. Third down. This is what you really guard against. And he, this is going to be the center leaning. He's the guy that is, creates this thing. Look at his rear end. That's a freshman dropping. They'll try to coach that. He's a little bit ahead of everybody else. That's a freshman mistake. Vince Carter, the true freshman out of Waco, Texas. Four penalties for the Sooners. On the 25, Carter with a high snap. And Clayton tries to come up with it, but it's incomplete. He trapped it. Well, I think Hibble probably felt a little of the pressure. I don't know that the pressure was really there. He seems sometimes a little bit unsure of himself. That ball was a little bit thrown too low. That, that was too low. That, that, that receiver couldn't have got that. Uh, I'm not sure Howard Twilley. Wait a minute, I've got the wrong team. I'm not sure Howard Twilley could have caught that. Or Eddie Hinton. Or Steve Larkin. you got to get him in there. He's running, Pearson. For, He's running for something, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's a congressman. In there. But really, the, the ball was way too low. It, this isn't it isn't a very smooth start to this one, right? Right. Yeah. It looks like a team is going to the most at the moment. 42-yard field goal by Duncan is good, though. And with 12.48 to play in the first half, the Sooners have a couple of field goals on the board. It's 6-0 Oklahoma over Tulsa as the Sooners take advantage of great field position the last two times they had the ball. More from Norman when we come back on Fox Sports Net. Well, the Sooners have had scoring opportunities time and time again in the first half of this game against Tulsa, but just two field goals to show for it as the Sooner drive bogs down. Had great field position. Drive started at the 41. Results in the Tim Duncan field goal of better than 40 yards. But the Sooners plagued by penalties on that possession. 6-0. Stoop Sooners lead Tulsa. 12.47 to play here in the second quarter. In the end zone. Four or five yards deep. And he's going to run it out. Got to the 15. Donald Scholes, who is the best player on this Tulsa team, according to head coach Steve Burns. He is a playmaker, and he was trying to make a play there, but he could have had the ball at the 20-yard line had he opted to down it. Well, that was a valuable five yards he just gave up with the kind of field position this game has been for Tulsa. Kind of a senior mistake. I was surprised he brought it out. From the 15, Tyler Gooch, the true freshman at quarterback. A fumble and falling on it is Tulsa in the backfield. Teddy Lehman, the linebacker, was coming. Well, again, it was a blitz up the middle. He was unpicked up. Uh, it didn't see him coming. The guard let him go. You're going to see right here, your right line. There he goes. Number 11. Lucky to cover that fumble on this end of the field. Pretty conservative right now because they're just trying to get out of here live. They're trying to free. You had Coach Sampson on a minute ago. It's called freezing the ball. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. Four quarters off. Exactly. Of trying to keep the clock running. So they laid on the sophomore out of Fort Gibson. Credited with the stop as he was blitzing. 
Dukes throws to the left side. It is complete to his tight end, Jared Roach. He's run out of bounds by Mac McCoy. One of the outstanding one-yard gains of the day. Uh, tough catch for the tight end. Pretty good throw, but Tulsa's going to have to have more of that. They're going to have to get here. Comes your, you'll see the quarterback drifting to his left. Good throw. Good catch. One-yard gain. Long way to go. We've got to make a first down. Throw it downfield. Don't want to get it intercepted. Third and nine. You can do so much more if only you have field position. They do not have it and haven't had field position in this game. Has his man Donald Schultz, and there is a first down to the 27-yard line. And there is a quarterback that stood in the pocket versus the blitz that time. Last time, when I told him to stand in there, he dropped. Take good coaching. He dropped. <laughs> hey, good throw, good catch. Watch him here on the blitz. A lot of things in his face. Boom, for a freshman football player to throw that thing, that route. Pretty good football catch, too. Not that great a throw, but a good play for Hurricane. Something to remember for a young player. Got to be a good listener, and he heard you that time, Larry. That's right. He's in trouble here, gets away, and almost gets back to the line of scrimmage. Again, a run on first and ten. Let's run the clock. Let's get to the dressing room. Hey. Again, this is probably execution problems. It's way too wide. Not much of a fake. You're not fooling anybody. Yeah, the quarterback, and maybe that's his inexperience. You know, he didn't start till what, two or three games ago. He is a true freshman. Uh, that's a small mistake, but you don't want to make those kind of mistakes against the center. Second and 11 for the Hurricane. Doc Lincolnship was his starting quarterback earlier in the season. Now he's the scout team quarterback for Tulsa. And Duke stopped for a loss. In on the stop is Brandon Everett. As I said before, it's a little bit conservative right here. Second 11, and they run the draw uh, with the quarterback carrying, and the center's headed diagnosed all the way. Now, what a big draw. Here comes the blitz again. The center's are getting after him right here. There's Cal. There we go. Two linebackers firing up the middle. Quarterback has no chance. There he is, number 11. Teddy Lehman, and with help from the safety, Brandon Everett. It's great against the run. On the 23-yard line. Rolling to his right is Gooch looking downfield. It's knocked away by Matt McCoy and Gooch down in a heap. He got hit from behind. Well, once again, on long yardage, what they're trying to do, and I don't blame them, they're trying to bring the quarterback out of the pocket, try to flow with him as hard as they can so he doesn't have to face doesn't have to face the blitz, but he about gets caught from behind. Here comes the young boom right there. He gets hit hard. Good play by the D-back. Again, a toss of punt. Antonio Perkins with the hit on Gooch results in an incompletion. And Brandon Jones, again, deep for the Casey Lipscomb punt. Last time Lipscomb with just a 24-yard punt. He bounces right around the midfield stripe and that's where it will be down and the Sooners once again with terrific field position there and is a flag down and I'll bet you it is a hold this has been the deal I was watching them and they're trying to get the return on the guy holds the guy man this stuff killed the Keith Burns team has lost six in a row started the season Back in late August with a 51 to nothing win over Indiana State. Then at the long layoff, of course, they were scheduled to face the Sooners here on September 15th. That game postponed until today for the events of September 11th. So it was a three-week layoff for Tulsa. And they've lost six in a row since they returned to play. Played Fresno State in that first game back and lost to Fresno. On the kicking team, that's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat fourth down. Well, this even sets them deeper, and now the Sooners are going to have awfully good field position. Uh, this game is getting ready to explode if Tulsa isn't careful. They've got to make some first down and get some field position. Snap from the 13-yard line as Lipscomb stands in the end zone. Brandon Jones again deep. And they gained 10 yards on the exchange. It was exactly the same link punt as before. They gained 10 yards on the holding call. Sooners will start at the 40 when we come back.
Sooners lead the Golden Hurricanes 6 0 with 9.25 to play here in the second quarter. Tulsa has had four possessions in this game, just over 40 yards of total offense. Antonio Perkins, our force on the special teams. Tommy Harris, the true freshman, with one big stop. And Larry, the Sooners have stopped Tulsa cold. Well, let me tell you something when you got great speed, great scheme, and great coaching. It's a tough, tough day for offenses, and Tulsa paying the price. And bad field position as well right. for Tulsa. Sooners have great field position for the third straight time. Hibble with the give to the back coming through Quentin Griffin, and he just got past the line of scrimmage. Well, I know the Sooners have to be disappointed right now in their running game. Even though they haven't run it very much, the little bit they do run, they think it ought to be able to fool people because Tulsa's only playing what we call six in the box, and, and uh, they really haven't created anything in the running game. It'll be second and ten for the Sooners here. There's Michael Delaney, the transfer from Oklahoma, played for the Sooners in 1998, sat out in 1999, decided to transfer to Tulsa. Did not play football in 1999, was on campus here at OU, and over the middle, Antoine Savage inside the 20. First down, Sooners. Well, Tulsa was in the three deep zone, and what you're going to be able to see here, you're going to be able to see the fact that it's just a quick slant. I'm going to take him down in here. The ball's going to end up coming right through here. Here we come. He's wide open, turns up. Good run. It's, you have to hit the ball in that area. You're going to see the three deep right here. You can see all of these guys right back here in the three deep zone. In the three deep zone. Here they come. Pretty good play by the Sooners. Best of the day. Hibble with a shovel pass. Griffin inside the 20 and gets close to the 15-yard line. A game tackle by Tulsa. <laughs> the Sooners once again get inside the 20-yard line against the Hurricane. It'll be a second and six for Hibble and the Sooners as Griffin picks up four. Well, the center only need to pick up some yards here. They don't want the typical loss they've been getting either by penalty or just getting stopped. They'd love to see them get them right down near the first down here and then get the first going in and score. Flush and right. Ronaldo works to the 10. Inside the 10 to the 7. Broke a tackle. Got five extra yards. And a first down and goal for the Sooners. Well, so far, this kind of reminds me of the 70s. I mean, uh, I didn't dream. Here comes Howell on the option play. Good decision, makes the pitch. He's one-on-one -on -one with the D-back. Makes, runs over him, doesn't make him miss him. But now, they have first and goal here at the seven. Tough situation for Tulsa. Ronaldo works, gets the Sooners inside the 10 at the seven yard line. Did not have a carry last week against Nebraska. Griffin. Speed to the outside, to the pylon, touchdown Oklahoma. The last three plays on the ground, Griffin works and Griffin again, and it works. Well, they have to be pleased that they've got some sort of running attack play. This was a quick kick. You're going to see right here, quarterback comes up. All it is is really a toss sweep, one-on-one -on -one blocking. Tulsa wasn't ready. They were bunched in in short yardage inside. The Sooners went outside. First touchdown. Awfully good run by the back, too. Tough run right to the short yard. Griffin had 62 yards last week against Nebraska. The Sooners have their first touchdown of the day as Duncan tacks on the extra point. 13-0, Quentin Griffin and the Sooners lead it. We're midway through the second quarter. A 40-yard drive for the Sooners. And Oklahoma continues to have great field position. The last three possessions started at the Tulsa 32, the Tulsa 41, and now the Tulsa 40-yard line. They all result in scores, two field goals and a touchdown. And this one is a lot like the Kansas game from last month, several weeks ago, where the Sooners just lived in Kansas into the field throughout the first half of that game. And it turned out to be a lopsided win for the Sooners. 
but they did struggle a little bit offensively until they got it cranked up. Prince Smith with four touchdown catches on that day, and Jason White. Well, if you're Keith Byrne, you're standing over, and I have been in this situation, trust me. And he's saying to himself, let's see, I've got about seven minutes left to get out of this quarter alive. If they get one more touchdown, the score's 20. If I can give them seven, he can add it up, see. He's thinking right now what it's going to be like going into the fourth quarter. And he's saying, run, clock, run, or offense, please get it out to the 50, just the 50. Four yards deep. This time, Tulsa will not run it out. Donald Scholes elected last time to run it out, got it out to the 15-yard line. Tulsa will start this time at the 20, which matches the best field position of the afternoon for the Hurricanes. We played Utah State here one day a long time ago, one of the well-known powerhouses of football, and, and uh, they never got the ball. It was a windy game in the first quarter. They never got the ball by any form or any fashion past the 20. Deja vu. I couldn't believe I'd ever see this happen again. From the 20, Tyler Gooch, the quarterback. Last time now rushes forward past the 30, has a first down. And slowly but surely, Tulsa with a little bit of field position now. Well, I'll tell you one thing, they, to give these Tulsa fans some uh, ray of hope for the future, I, I guarantee you this little guy here has got some moxie for a freshman quarterback. Stand in the pocket, stand in the pocket, decide to run as you're seeing right here. He looks like an athlete. He looks more athletic than he does his quarterback. He's a, I think he's going to be a good football player for him. He Burns describes him as a playmaker. Last week against San Jose State, he rushed for 102 yards. That's 12 yards today and throws it away. Well, the biggest problem he's having, the Sooners are relentless, and, and we all know what kind of defense they are. They, they put so much pressure on you. They had it coming at him again. He's lucky to survive the, the scramble and try to get out and just make any kind of throw he could. Rocky Calvis leading that Sooner defense. He's the leading tackler on the Oklahoma squad. Roy Williams second. Second and ten. That'll be second and ten for Tulsa with its own 31-yard line. Three receivers out to the right side. Throws it deep down the right side for Donald Scholes. And Antonio Perkins almost there to pick it off. Calvis with the pressure on Gooch. Well, uh, Mr. Gooch is going to be pretty sore when this game's over also. He, uh, he had a hard throw. You'll see the rush coming right here in his face. It's a blitz. Here they come up the middle. Continued pressure. Bam. They've got him. He's looking. Not a very good throw, really. Nobody could catch it. Almost had us an interception, though. Rocky Galvis, the senior out of Jinx. Quarterback Tyler Gooch out of Tulsa Union. Some classic matchups between Union and Jinx the last few years. Flushed out. Gooch will run it to the 35-40. Has a first down. Brought down from behind by Teddy Lamer. Outstanding. And I guarantee you they're moving in on that 50-yard line. This quarterback, I'm telling you what now, he, he's got some moxie. I understand why they've made the change. I didn't see the other young man. But I like the way this guy is trying to make something happen. And he broke the pocket. He makes the run. He's the kind of guy that drives quarterback, I mean, defensive coordinators crazy. You, you got everything. Everything stopped, and all of a sudden, he's gone. Mike Stoops, the co-defensive coordinator. Tulsa has its fourth first down. Sooners with 10 from the 43. They give is the back coming through to the 45-yard line. Eric Richardson to the 46. Well, you see what uh, they're trying to do at Tulsa. They've got some field position here. They're going to run the clock. They're going to run the clock. They're going to get out of this thing uh, in a lot better shape than a lot of people thought they would if they could keep this clock running. You know, this is not a bad situation right here where they are, second, seven, second, eight. I'm a little surprised that they don't try some sort of screen passes, that type thing, to take a little of the pressure that the young man's getting from the Oklahoma defense. No screen so far, no reverses so far. Pretty bland, but at least they're coming toward the 50. Yeah, finally, Keith Burns' team has, is getting some field position here. And it'll affect the play calling a little bit. Scholes past the midfield stripe, down to the 45-yard line, and Tulsa's in, OU's into the field. 
Pretty impressive. This is show. This guy will probably play in the NFL someday. He's a kick returner, punt returner. He can run with the ball after he catches it. He's been their big playmaker in Tulsa all year long, and we're certainly watching him pretty close. Donald Scholes for the first time today. Tulsa is in Oklahoma's end of the field at the 45-yard line. Three receivers out to the left side. And running the option this way, keeping his gooch and stopped at the 45. Well, again, I, I think if we can get the wide angle, they don't run it quite as good. They should have blocked inside. He's having to pitch off the wrong man. You can see the, the quarterback has to duck up inside, and you don't want to, want to have to do that. You really want to be able to go down the line and option somebody. They were blocking the guy that they've got to option. I keep getting these teams on wishbone. <laughs> 45 yard line, it will be second down and 10 for Tulsa. One of the five defensive backs in the game. And Scholes unable to come up with it at the 40-yard line. Very straight on the coverage. Now, Eric, just as soon as I brag on you, you say you may be an NFL prospect. You ain't going to be for long if you drop him <laughs> kind of passes. You mean Donald? No, well, that's... <laughs> What did I call him? Eric? That's close. Yeah, that's right. He may have a that's brother right. name, Eric. Who knows? No, really. You, we have a saying in the NFL, you got to make that kind of catch. No excuses. Got to got to do it. And uh, that's a hard drop for him, a hard drop for his football team in this situation. He is a senior, and he has caught a lot of balls. Second in the nation in receiving is Donald Scholes from Eden, Oklahoma. And dropping it on the left side this time. Well, I'm not so sure that that is the purest of drops. That's kind of what we call listening to footsteps. You kind of worry about getting your head knocked off, and that may have created that drop. But two drops in a row have killed a real impressive drive. That's unfortunate for Tulsa. Clint Roundtree, the freshman out of Tahlequah, unable to hold on, and it's going to set up a fourth down situation. But finally, Tulsa is able to punt in a good field position. Well, they might as well run a fake punt and have the same kind of field position they've been having all day. They could maybe make their first. This is as deep as they've been if they gave it right there. Fourth and ten, Fagan is standing at his ten-yard line. Lipscomb with a short punt again, bounces at the 21, and it will be outside the 20 where the Sooners will start. I'm not so sure who's coaching that uh, returner, but sooner or later, I say, hey, move up a little bit. So far, there's been about five of them hit the ground in front of him, and I think the wind's blowing a lot harder than he recognizes. He had last three punts have been less than 30 yards for Lipscomb. Preseason number two ranked Sooner wrestling team is primed to make another run at a national championship this season. It's a long road. It all begins today with the red-white classic at the OU Fieldhouse following the OU Tulsa football game. Season tickets, see championship wrestling all season long by contacting the OU Athletic Ticket Office, 800-456-GO-OU, or log on to Soonersports.com. On the option to the left side, Quentin Griffin with lots of running room. Slips a tackle at the 50 and inside the 45. Well, once again, the speed option got them, and one of the reasons it gets them is their secondary is so soft. They're playing the pass so hard, the corners are backed up so deep that there's no way they can support you. You have to come out of the secondary to support you. You're going to see how deep, awfully good run here again, the Griffin. But you've got to have secondary support to stop that play. Here comes a high stepping back. This back here, is it, that is either Joe Washington, Greg Fruit, or something. Wait a minute. He was going downtown. I like that. <laughs> high stepping to the Tulsa 43-yard line was Quentin Griffin. Now Hibble has time. Throws deep down the middle. Incomplete. One of the rare times the Sooners have gone downtown, as I say, and, and that ball was thrown into coverage, actually. There were a lot of Tulsa guys there. You're going to be see. You're going to see as he drops back what he sees. Look in the middle of the field at the safety. Right there, that safety has a right to the ball almost as much as the receiver. I don't know if it's a good throw or a bad read, but not what I'm sure Coach Stoops wants. 
Keithan McCory, number nine, almost able to come up with that one. It's second and ten. McCory, the junior out of Westmore High School. Over to the right side, the big tight end, Trent Smith, inside the 40, down near the 37-yard line. You know, the word tight end, I don't know why they use it, because he ain't never tight. Nope. He's split out, he's everywhere on the field. He's, a, he's really all he is, in my mind, is a big, tall receiver. Quite a load when he catches the ball. I know one thing, if I want him 160-pound defensive back, that guy's swinging out with the ball, and you're going you're, you're gonna to see him in the slot right here. He's going to take the ball. He's going to go swing right out here, right out here, swing pass, big body coming up through there. He's punishing those guys. I would hate to have to see that if I were D-back. Third down play complete. It's Antoine Savage out of bounds, has the first down. Moving the chains. That's right. We, we call this a little dinking and dunking. There's a whole lot of dinking. We ain't got no dunking yet, and that's the long ball. But the Dinks are getting them there, but they're not getting enough touchdowns at this point. I'm sure they'd like to get this thing in. About two minutes and uh, 51 seconds left for the half. Sooners need to score and kind of get this thing rolling. If I sound like I'm for the Sooners, I'm not. I want everybody to understand that. <laughs> I just was here 11 years. Check this out. On the reverse, Curtis Fagan. Check, check the clip. There's a flag inside the 20, inside the 15, and Fagan inside the 5, but it's going to come back. Well, it's pretty obvious we can get that uh, as he comes around. It's a, again a middle. I'm not sure he couldn't have made it outside without the clip, but uh, this is the kind of game it's been. Look at Stoops. He's kind of got that look on his face, too. Kind of ho-hum. What is this? You're going to be able to see the clip. He's going to come out around here on the reverse. Here he comes. Here he comes. The clip's going to occur right there. That's the young man. Whoops. I got all them dots on him, but I had him for a while. But Frank Romero looked like the left tackle. It's a block in the back. I saw the clip all the way. Well, Frank Romero should know better than that. He's an older player. He's a guy that we're looking at. Uh, you know, it's so easy to clip the guy, and I understand that. But you'd rather just go on and take the five-yard loss, or maybe the back can create something on his own. Don't clip. 45-yard line, and the Sooners are backed up now with first and long, first and 23, what amounts to a 13-yard penalty. Little has time, throws over the mid middle to the 40-yard line. Off of good protection, again, uh, able to just create something right in the middle of the field, but now that's not going to get you the first down doing it that way. Off of good protection, you're going to see the front four seconds, the four of Tussle coming in there. No one is even coming close. He has all day long. That's what the Sooners like to see. Remarkable that they've got some freshmen in there doing it, too. Andre Wolfolk on the receiving end, the junior out of Denver, Colorado, playing both ways. And Wolfolk comes up hobbling here. He comes off. You know, this is strange. When we had Deion Sanders at uh, the Dallas Cowboys, Deion played both ways. And believe this or not, one of the things that we were always worried about when he was a receiver, getting hit and getting hurt. But I promise when Deion was a corner, he wasn't going to get hurt. But he wasn't going <laughs> to tackle anybody. <laughs> or on punt returns, too, right. Deion could get hurt. Right. Hibble has time again and finds a man open. 25-yard line, Mark Clayton inside the 20. First down, Oklahoma. Well, that's got to thrill the Sooner coaches to death because actually no one was open. He created the play on his own entirely. The Tulsa did everything right. They covered everything right. And all of a sudden now, you get Brett Farr coming out of there on you, scrambling around out there and throwing the football. And that's got to make them very happy to see that. He did that on his own. Big, big play. 19-yard line, first down for the Sooners. Well, has a man at the 17. Swarmed under after a two-yard pickup. Savage on the receiving end. When you talk about Hibble being able to make time and complete that pass. Yesterday, Larry, we were in the coach's office. We were looking at the te Texas tape, and you were very impressed with Jason White 
and his ability to do just that. Well, I frankly was shocked at how good he is. I, I, I didn't realize, I didn't get to see the Texas game, but uh, I understand what a great loss that is so far to the, this football team. I was playing good, but Jason White is kind of the new era right now that you see all across college, all across the NFL of the active quarterback. He becomes the guy, you know, you've only got one running back back here, and if you get the quarterback that can run, now you're back to two back offense and, and watching that guy against texas if he hadn't created plays on his own i'm not sure they'd have beat texas just like if he hadn't created that play right there i uh, know they wouldn't be in a position to score this touchdown so it's uh this is such a tough offense for a quarterback because the pressure is on him there's no downs off you don't get to turn and hand the ball to the tailback 25 times and say good luck hey in this offense it's on you almost every play whether you're you're reading the coverage, you're getting hit, you're running the ball. Man alive, uh, the guy would have two scholarships what they asked him to do. It's a remarkable what Josh Heupel was able to do last year for the Sooners, the 13-0 season. As much pressure on every play there is on the Oklahoma quarterback. 17-yard line. Second and eight for the Sooners. Low snap. Hibble handles it. Completes a trend snip inside the 10 down near the five-yard line. As the clock gets down to near a minute it left. Well, this guy is really, really emerging, and he's becoming the go-to guy for the quarterback. They feel more comfortable, a big, tall guy. He's probably sometimes a secondary receiver. They had a little slant route that they're reading, but they go to him, and he is such a load. I said that earlier to take down. 6'5", 228 pounds. I said, tall receiver. He ain't no tight end. That's decent speed, too, Trent Smith does. It sure does. First and goal from the seven. Griffin back behind Hibble. On the pitch. Easy does it. Quentin Griffin, his second touchdown of the day. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Well, this is just uh, a little bit more different options. <laughs> Seven yards out. The Sooners have run that end around a lot. They faked the end around that time, and the pitch to Griffin, and he's in. Just over a minute to play as you look at Andre Wolfolk, who's headed to the locker room early with an ice pack on that lower leg. Duncan is good with the point after, and the Sooners have a 20-point lead. Griffin has matched his rushing output from a week ago against Nebraska. Seven carries, 62 yards, and now two touchdowns. You're going to be able to see him right here again on the speed option. All the quarterback does is come down the line, tailback catches the ball, hello end zone. Pretty simple. Here he goes again down the line. This has been the big running play of the game. What do you mind the kind of guy that brings out the best in these option teams? They did it just for you, Larry. That's exactly right. Uh, again, this is so hard on a quarterback. He's dropping back, throwing the ball one down, throwing the ball, reading the coverage, taking the hit. And all of a sudden, he got to go down the line of scrimmage and pitch the ball on the option play. J.C. Watts is here. He's probably thrilled to death to see that. That's right. J.C. is in attendance. A 77-yard scoring drive for the Sooners. Did in about three minutes and capped by Griffin's touchdown coming up at halftime as we're just over a minute to play here in the second quarter the honorees here this weekend for the Sooners members of the team back in the or the teams back in the 50s to put together the 47 game win streak from 1953 to 57 they are honored we'll have that at halftime for you plus we'll hear from both coaches the touchback Tulsa will start at its own 20 here in the last minute of the first half you mentioned the uh, 47 game winning streak their reunion you know I said this place has winning streak reunions like some places have family reunions <laughs> they, got, they have one but I was here uh, a couple of years ago for our set, uh, 1975 national championship reunion we won 37 in a row with a tie they don't even talk about it well, they had a 47-game streak on the heels of a 31-game streak, exactly late in the right. 40s and on into the 50s. And a storied tradition from the 20, boots out of the shotgun, under pressure, and a two-yard pickup. Knocked out of bounds is the tight end, Jared Roach. Brandon Everett can deliver a hit. 
Well, again, the Sooners just keep bringing the pressure. And then Calmus that time rushed the passer, got off the guard, hit the quarterback, wasn't quite there at the time, but it was awful good rush by an awful good linebacker. Calmus is another guy that I know is not too far away from the league I'm around right now. He is a senior. Total yardage, Tulsa held to 66 yards here in the first half. The Sooners up near 300. Second and nine for the 21. And the give on the draw play, Richardson tries to find some running room. Gets outside and passes the 25 up to about the 27, stays in bounds. Well, I promise you this, it wasn't intended. That was a great run by the back. The Sooners had it diagnosed. They ran a little stunt with the tackle in the end coming down inside. And that back created whatever they were able to make. He puts them in a good position here. They're right on track to get out of this thing. If they can get this first down, maybe. I'm surprised the Sooners aren't calling timeout, really. So they could make them either punt the ball if they don't make the first. Clock winds down to less than 20 seconds now. Third and three. And Richardson again, and up near, and he has the first down beyond the 30. Well, we'll go at the half, and I'm sure Coach Burns is saying, Whew, I'm glad of this. Well, last week, Tulsa at San Jose State gave up 63 points, over 700 yards total offense for the Spartans in that game. Tyler Gooch has had to work from way back in his own end of the field here in the first half, as that will do it for the first half of play. The Sooners have scored on their last four possessions. Two field goals and two touchdowns. Quentin Griffin with the touchdowns. And Keith Burns, Hurricane, finds themselves going to the locker room 20-0. Let's check in with Zach Klein. Zach? All right, Bill, thank you very much. Coach, offensively, a little slow in the first half, but the last two possessions, two Quentin Griffin touchdown runs. Sure, we've moved the ball. I mean, we I don't know, we've got about 290 yards of offense. Sure, we need to put it in the end zone and complete some of those drives, but... Um, you know, it's, it, it, we're still doing a lot of good things, but sure, we got to put the ball in the end zone when we get it in the red zone. On the flip side of that, defensively, 75 yards are allowed on total offense for Tulsa. Very impressive first two quarters. Yeah, defense is playing strong as usual. We've missed contain on a, and let the quarterback get out, and that really that's where some of the, most of the yards have come. But just got to keep playing solid defense and get the ball in, in the red zone. Well, Coach, appreciate your time. Guys, halfway home to their 18th consecutive win in Memorial Stadium. Belt, we'll send it back to you upstairs. And the Sooners trying to start an overall win streak again after having the 20-game streak snapped a week ago. All the halftime activities come your way in a moment. Well, the Sooners lead the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa 20 to nothing at halftime here at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma. The uh, Sooner offense sputtered a little bit early on in the first half, but a couple of touchdowns late. Bill Jones, along with Larry Lacewell, the former defensive coordinator for the Sooners back in the 70s, former head coach at Arkansas State, and for the last 10 years, the scouting director for the Dallas Cowboys of the NFL. Larry, your assessment of the first half. What's that old saying? Uh, the score in the <laughs> indicating the game. Uh, the Sooners are dominating in every form and fashion, and like their head coach said. They just hadn't got the ball in the end zone. I think Tulsa's played conservative. They've done the things. They hadn't had a turnover. They've only had one penalty, and they're still getting the heck beat out of them. But, but other than that, uh, they're doing about as well as they can do, and I'm sure the Sooners aren't really happy. I think, though, so, for the Sooners, and you look ahead at the rest of the schedule for Oklahoma, particularly with Texas A&M staring them in the face next week, it's important to have a strong second half. Well, I'll assure you this. The, the white meat has gone out of their schedule. They got, they got Texas State. Texas A&M and Oklahoma State, they want to see something out of this offense, I'll bet you, in the third quarter that will show them more positives than they're seeing right now, even though they're moving the ball, they're not scoring touchdowns. Nate Hibble has thrown 31 passes in the first half of this game. The Sooners have amassed 289 yards of total offense. They've had terrific field position. Tulsa, on the other hand, with 75 yards of total offense, have not had good field position at all. The Sooners with a couple of touchdowns on the board and a couple of field goals for this lead. 14 first downs to six for the Hurricane. Defense continues to do the job for the Sooners, looking for more out of the offense in the second half as again texas a&m will be up next week for the sooners here at owen field it's oklahoma and tulsa the second half of this one when we come back to owen field here on fox sports net in just a moment
check in with Zach Klein. Zach, all right, Bill, thank you very much. Coach Keith Burns, just a couple big plays of getting back in this game, huh? We got to continue to battle on defense, create a turnover, and our offense has got to help us. Make one first down, uh, and in a kicking game, we got to turn the field over. It hurt us there in the second quarter, but we got to keep fighting like we're fighting and, and believe something's going to good happen to the team. If we do that, we got a great chance here. 75 yards of total offense in the first two quarters. What did you say to the guys in the locker room to get them ready for the second half? continue to believe in the plan, but I'm going to tell you what, they're as good on defense as I've ever been around. They, they do a great job, and if it's two yards there, they hold you to two yards. They're very good on defense. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Guys, and a couple big plays away from beating the first top five team in the history of the program. We will see. Bill, back up to you upstairs. Well, Keith Burns knows his defense, as does that man, Bob Stoops, the head coach of the Sooners. Keith Burns, the former defensive coordinator at Arkansas, and at USC under John Robinson, of course, Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator at Florida and Kansas State before that. And the Sooner defense has played like it has all season long early on in this one as we go to the second half. The Sooners would like to uh, do what they did not do in the second half, their last home game against Baylor a couple of weeks ago. They had a 27-0 lead at halftime of that one and did not much muster much in the way of offense in the second half, particularly when you look ahead to Texas A&M staring the Sooners in the face next week. A&M is trailing Texas Tech 3-0 in the third quarter out in Lubbock. In fact, the next two opponents for the Sooners, A&M and Tech. And so the Sooners look to polish things up offensively as we begin play here in the third quarter quarter. Sooners losing last week to Nebraska. It did not hurt them as far as the BCS poll is concerned as they were number one going in. They're number two after losing to Nebraska last week, the 20 to 10 final. Sooners have the destiny in their own hands when you look at the BCS rankings from this week. Well, I understand that they supposedly have to be a total of 21 points to maintain their, po their position. They're right on schedule. We need one point. They need one point. All right, the second half kickoff will not be returned to the 20-yard line. As Tulsa starts on offense, it is Donald Scholes, who's a fine kick returner, who runs into problems against the Sooner special teams. Well the, wind, wind, well, the wind has died a little bit as I look at the flags, and maybe the field position can come from a kicking game this time because they're not going to move the ball a lot against the Sooners, and if they can just punch it out a little bit, get it to the other end of the field, Try to make the Sooners turn the ball over and create. I just don't see their offense being able to take it this far away very many times. Best field position of the day for Tulsa. It's on 20-yard line twice. Start at the 16 this time. And under pressure, Duke's trying to get away. But with a second chance, Corey Klein has it. I think if you watch Corey Klein, this is a great example of great effort. He makes the rush. He comes off the guy. Doesn't he? He's relentless. He loses him. Comes back after him. Gets him on the ground. This is just typical of a center defense. The guys can really, really run. Well, Corey Klein, the sophomore out of Union High School in Tulsa, with the sack of the quarterback out of Union High School in Tulsa, Tyler Gooch. A loss of six on the play, second and 16. Two receivers out to the right side. And rolling this way is Gooch, throws down field, intercepted. Well, that's the name we were waiting on. Roy Williams. Don't know that we even mentioned Roy Williams in the first half. If we can get this, we'll get a little what we call cover two, a little double coverage. You're going to see what happened. The corner's in the flat. Safety's over the top. Uh, just a great play. You're going to see it right here. When the quarterback comes out, your corner's going to level in the flat. Your safety's going to be over the top. There he is. Roy Williams, you know, I, I tell people that Oklahoma really plays, really plays 11 and a half men on defense. Roy Williams plays linebacker. He plays safety. That's kind of unfair. He is really outstanding in there. It's typical of his performance. Roy, Roy Williams. Some people talk about Roy Williams when they start talking Heisman candidates this year. Inside the 25, inside the 20, Griffin inside the 15, almost to the 10-yard line. Great way to open the second half of their offense. Little draw play. That's what they want out of their running game. It's nothing really fancy. It's nothing powerful. It's a lot of finesse. You're going to see this play. He rides him again. You're going to see the guard tackle drop back like it's passed. Tackle out. Guard in. Here goes Griffin again. He's, he's going to have a big day rushing for a team that throws the ball as much as they do. 77 yards rushing for Quentin Griffin, and he's got 45 yards receiving today. Pick up a 15, first and 10 from oh, the 11. Run in for Griffin. Touchdown, Oklahoma. 
As they say in coaches speak, they made some adjustments. <laughs> Somewhere. Halftime was good to the Sooners. Two plays, 26 yards, 26 nothing with the point after to come. Third touchdown of the day for Quentin Griffin, and Sooner fans have reason to cheer early in the third. All Quentin Griffin on that 26-yard drive. And Duncan on for the point. And good. Well, you're going to see it's the same type play. It's exactly the same draw play that they ran before. And a touchdown for Oklahoma. Sooners kicking again after the quick touchdown early in the third and out of the end zone this time. Off the foot of Tim Duncan. Well, I was going to brag on Tuck a little bit. They were playing the kind of game they could kind of escape out of here without embarrassment because they weren't turning the football over. You'd be surprised if you're able to just punt the ball, punt the ball, punt the ball. They were headed for a 10-punt game. They lost their punt because they threw the interception. Now, that was a short field for the Sooners. They did exactly what they wanted, got the touchdown. This thing could get a little ugly here. Tulsa needs to really be concerned and move the football. Third time today, Tulsa has started at its own 20. Best field position to start a drive is the 20, and just one yard picked up by Richardson. Well, they did one thing I said. They were conservative. That was a little short draw play. Again, that's what they've been running all day. And they're trying to run the clock. They're trying to get a little bit of field position, keep the thing going, keep the ball out of the center's offense. The only problem with that, when they're not moving the ball, boy, that's because the defense is going to be on the field for a long time. It's D.J. Barnett on the carry. Griffin, 25 yards and two plays for the touchdown. Took all of 25 seconds and a 27-0 lead. Gooch looks left, throws over the middle, and with the defense is Rocky Kalmus at the 25-yard line. Jared Roach, the tight end on the receiving end. Well, I think Coach Burns put it the very best. If there's two yards there, that's all you're going to get two yards. They're not going to let you get any more. Rocky Kalmus was all over the guy before he even had an, an opportunity. Uh, he has played great in the past. He's doing a yeoman's job here today. These, these guys on defense, it's kind of a ho-hum act for them when they've had to go out there and face the University of Texas to go against Nebraska, shut them down. This has got to be a pretty easy task for them. And it was incomplete to Roach, third down and nine. As Calvis, who's in contention for the Butkus Award, probably the odds-on favorite for the Butkus Award after being a finalist last year, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year a year ago. Third and long, showing blitz. Oh. Derek Strait almost had an interception. It is a completion instead, but short of a first down to Shoals. What uh, I think Tulsa is going to have to do sooner or later, they're going to have to pack those corners off of uh, their receivers. They've not tried one deep bomb today, which allow you're going to see the corner really jump this route right here. He's going to be all over it. He doesn't make the catch. The Tulsa guy makes the catch. Now, they're going to punt the ball. They've got a fourth and one. I'd do the same thing. Derek Strait almost had his second interception of the season and almost his second touchdown of the season. Fourth and a long one yard. Brandon Jones is deep for the Sooners, the freshman. He's sent back inside his own 30-yard line at a 23-yard return earlier. I think it's nearly 10 yards on the return this time. So the Sooners will start inside their own 40-yard line. Brandon Jones returns it nine yards. Quentin Griffin has three touchdowns today. He's halfway to his total against Texas last year when he had six. On the top sweep, one score for Griffin. A pickup of nearly 40 yards, high stepping his way there. An easy touchdown for number two, and just moments ago, number three. Quentin Griffin with nearly 90 yards rushing. He's back there alongside Nate Hibble as the Sooners this time will start 63 yards away. 133 total yards of offense for number 22, Griffin. 
Dribble throws to the left side, an incomplete. Josh Norman unable to come up with it. You know, Josh Norman is another guy that it's, uh, he's kind of like a tight end. I think he weighs 225, 30 pounds. He's an awful big guy. He's a senior. He's going to be one of those guys that's going to be kind of hard to predict. You know, is he too, too big for a receiver, not quite big enough for a tight end? Uh, he, he's going to be easy to predict if he don't catch balls. Sort of a tweener. Right. A senior out of Midland, Texas, Lee High School. Oh, oh, yeah. Prince Smith tosses into the field down near the 35. This was a different receiver, but the same kind of route that they threw early. We can see that Prince Smith breaks it off what we call a short post. Probably the best throw of the day to, from Havel. He stung that ball right down here. You're going to see right here, he's going to make his break right through. Got the post route. Here he comes running up the field. Really a good throw. Really, really a good catch kind of football you like to see out of a passing game. Hibble looking a lot like Heupel. Inside the 35. Short pickup. Griffin on the carry. The Sooners are playing the kind of football right at this moment. I'm sure they intended to do it in the first quarter. What happens so often when you come off of a heartbreaking loss like the Nebraska? It's kind of a whole hum feeling out here on the field. They're kind of they're doing their job right now. I'm sure that uh, coach had a few words for them. And some would wonder why that would be. They it seems like they'd be so mad after losing a week ago, having a 20-game win streak snap. But the fact is, Tulsa is not a Nebraska, is not a A&M or a Tech coming up on the schedule. It's a third down and long coming up for the Sooners here. And the possessions for the Sooners today have had real good field position a lot of times resulting in a couple of field goals and the last three times they've had the football they have scored touchdowns on griffin runs big down here for the sooners as far as maintaining their streak of touchdown 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 let's see what they can do mark mangino's offense trying to convert on third Boom. down and does so right up the middle Trent Smith again. In the OU offense, they have what they call, once they do their progression reads, they go across the field looking for people. They can't find him. They use this expression. They go to their friend. I guarantee you one thing. This guy's an awful good friend of the quarterback. He is a big target. He's making a name for himself. Awful good throw again. I tell you, the quarterback's in rhythm right now. He, he's got it going. He's doing what they expect and what they want to see. 27 out of 35 is Hibble for nearly 250 yards of offense. Need a check off. The receivers to the right side. They flag the whistle. The Sooners were troubled early in this game by some false starts. Oklahoma was unable to score in its first two possessions of the game, but have scored on every possession since then. Part of the snap. Full start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Previous spot. Repeat first down. I didn't get that. There wasn't the center's rear end leaning again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that one. But that just drives the coach crazy. You're playing pretty good. Hey, we got it again. We, get, we need to get a smaller rear end on that guy. <laughs> it, it, it's too big. <laughs> but the coaches believe Vince Carter's going to get bigger. He's only a freshman. Hey, they, 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 they're going to narrow that rear end down if he keeps leaning. <laughs> Trent Smith with the completion again. This is Trent Smith show. I mean, uh, I bet them other receivers are getting a little mad out there. Golly, he's catching them and catching them. Huh? Again, it's right in the middle of the field. They're starting to really work on Tulsa in their cover three zone. Tulsa's got to drop somebody, go back to the three-man rush, try to stop some, some of that, put more people in the middle than they've got. Seven catches on the day for Smith. Coming into the game, the last three games, he had 25 catches. So he's averaging eight catches a game the last four games now. Flip got the ball to Griffin. Lots of running room. Can you say four touchdowns for Quentin Griffin? And this is what the coach is on. Again, Ohio, he was able to uh, create something on his own. And Griffin does the rest. Well, this
this is the Tulsa's worst nightmare. This is exactly what they didn't want. Out of hand. And it's exactly what happened to Tulsa last week against San Jose State. Early third quarter, Tulsa had problems. And San Jose won that game 63 to 27. Quentin Griffin, now two touchdowns away from a career high, which he had against Texas last year. Five and a half minutes into the second half, two touchdowns on the board for the Sooners. Check in again with Zach Klein. Thank you, Bill. The Sooners on the field, football field, going for a national championship of their own, but the lady basketball uh, team going for a national championship as well. Coach Sherry Cole, join me right now. And Coach Cole, if you look at the polls, anywhere from number one in the country to number six, your team is stacked and ready to roll, huh? Well, that's what they keep telling me. I don't know. Um, we might be the best six foot and under team in America. I don't know about that, but uh, our returnees have looked really good early on. They had an exhibition game last week. Veterans played really well. The freshmen are hanging on. They're real talented and getting better every day, and they better be doing all right because we open with Purdue. You open with Purdue, and no better to get the team rolling than Stacy Dale's consensus All-American. She is the, the woman to go to for your squad. Yeah, Stace, obviously, we're counting on her to kind of be a rock for us this year. Denise Caulfield, Kate Hill, Roslyn Ross. We got a lot of kids back, and, uh, you know, we're going to find out what they're made of immediately. We'll know a lot more about our team when we leave uh, Duke next weekend. Coach Sherry Cole, appreciate your time. A week from tomorrow, open up the season against Purdue. Guys, let's send it back to you. All right, thank you very much, Zach. Lots of high hopes for not only the Sooner men, but the Sooner women basketballers. It's obvious Zach knows a lot more about the women's team than I do. <laughs> They've had a lot of success the last couple of years. Tyler Gooch, 8 for 16, for 44 yards. Once again, Tulsa starts at its own 20. Richardson looked for a moment that he might have some running room, but if there's three yards for you, that's all you're going to get is three yards. I tell you what happened. Uh, you know, the hole closes so quick. The, the ball is blocked at the point of attack pretty good, and the guy makes the backside cut, and there's always, if the person don't get you, the second one will. Everybody on, you know, I, I was really surprised how good they are on defense. I, I knew they must be. Their stats were good. But at the same time, I didn't know their players were good. When I sat down and looked at the team speed, watched them on film, I can't tell you how impressed I was. Four man defensive front. Three wide receivers to the left. Now the show's blitz. A screen. It is. Out to the left side. A three yards shy of a first down will be third down. Well, that was a, a slip screen, what we call a screen. Again, they release the people, but you, you've got to be able to do that. You've got to get this line of Oklahoma off of you. Somebody holding up. Get the people scared to hold them. You'll see them right here. Hear the people releasing downfield in front of your ball. That is a screen pass. And if you don't do that, then Oklahoma just going to continue to bring the heat on you, bring the heat on you. They execute you that pretty good. They got a down they can make here. Sooners have Juan Fisker into the game. Number 74 lined up over the center right now. Hasn't played much this year. Been out with an injury. And unable to complete the pass. Shoals, it went off him. Well, it was actually was a great idea. They sprinted again. We're not talking about sprinting now. They're bringing the ball out strictly to avoid the inside blitz because they know they can't handle the pressure of the center. The problem was everything was great. Gooch threw the ball behind the receiver. That would have been a tough catch. They forced the first down to try to make this thing decent. Now the centers are going to get the ball again. And who knows? I think we do. Curtis Fagan is deep. Lipscomb with the punt. Over the head of Fagan. Well, I'll say one thing. He's driving that, that young man crazy back here feeling the fun. One time he kicked it up. One time he kicked it short. Next time over his head. Tough day. He had a 61-yarder his first time to punt. Then had a string of punts less than 30 yards. So the Sooner deep man not knowing where to line up on the punt return. Well, Larry, earlier we took you back 30 years ago to 1971, a memory that you'd like to forget, the 35-31 win right. for Nebraska. Now let's take you back 27 years ago. 1974, a much fonder memory for Larry Lacewell. You got that right. Steve Davis, touchdown. That's right. 
matter of fact, just to throw out a little something here, we beat uh, Nebraska 72, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. <laughs> and, but, hey, well, I was here, and uh, you can tell in that dressing room, national champions, we were undefeated. Uh, it was a great feeling, a great moment for all of us. Ronaldo works. Gets the call this time. Well, as we see, we have made some substitutions, I believe. If uh, I'm correct, that's uh, the backup running back. That's right. Well, I think the other guy is exhausted. <laughs> he, has run, he has run himself to death. So this gives this guy a chance to get here and see what he can do. So it was like it works. Yards per play today, 7.2 for Oklahoma. Less than two and a half yards of play for Tulsa. Works. Brought down, open field tackle. You know what impresses me really about the Sooners offense is how patient it is. Uh, you know, if it's a little dump, if it's two yards, if it's three yards, they don't mind the second and eights and the third and eights and that most passing teams really don't like. And golly, they'll just swing it out there, they'll dink it out there, and they just keep doing it, doing it, doing it. And the first thing you look up, and it's 400 yards passing. And I don't have that feeling that that's happening. That's right. But that Hibble has thrown 38 passes today. He's 30 out of 38. Mm. Third and long here. Hibble throws high, but Trent Smith is there. He is six feet, five inches tall. I will promise you the protection was so great that he could have sat down. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was the longest time. And then and again, though, this is what they're thrilled to see. Hebble take the opportunity, search the field. Watch how long he takes here. He'll sit here, he sits here, he sits here, he sits here. Oh, where's my friend? There he is. Same guy we've been talking about all day long. I think I'd tell cover that one. See if he'll throw it to the other. <laughs> A pickup of 15 yards, a third down conversion for Hibble and the Sooners. Deep down the middle, Savage inside the 35. Man, they're clicking now. This is what the Sooner fans came to see. This is exactly what the coaches wanted to see. Again, this is the post route. This is what they've heard the... Uh, Tulsa with all day long because they can't throw the ball down the boundary. The corners are so soft, and you'll see the quarterback going right down the middle of the field with the ball. Another real good throw, an outstanding catch, ball out in front of him. That's what you want to see out of a passing team. Savage picked up 28 yards on a reception. Works the left side of the 30. You know, you have to be fair to the Tulsa defense, too. You know, they've been, in the first half, they've been out there 44 plays. Let me tell you something. I don't know how many they've been all of a sudden. But when you play 44 plays on defense, you're headed towards maybe 90 plays. And that is a long, long day for a defense. If you're out there more than 65, 70 plays, that's just too many plays. This is the sixth play of this drive. Second and eight from the 30. Hibble found his man, but hit was Brandon Jones, and he's un unable to hold on. You know, I continue to talk about the uh, the offense of Oklahoma. I'm going to be fair. I really think the Tulsa defense has done a pretty darn good job. When you're on the field as much as they have, they've, they've done just about it. They've taken away a lot of the home runs. They've been able to try to make it Oklahoma take the the ball. They're just out there too long, and you can tell they're tired. No pass rush right now, period. Third and eight. It is four down territory for the Sooners here. Hibble was able to, con to convert on third and nine last time. Has time and converts again inside the 20. Has time. Has all day. Hey, has all day. What did I tell you? That pass rush is, is all but gone now. These guys are really, really tired. Tulsa doesn't have the depth to substitute people, and they've either got to change and decide to go to more blitzes, which creates quicker touchdowns. Right now, they don't know it, but they're running the clock. They're trying to freeze it, get the ball, get the thing running, and the Sooners are just look like a machine right now to me. So number 81, Brandon Jones, for this first catch as a Sooner. First of what the coaches feel like will be many catches for Brandon Jones, the true freshman out of Texarkana. Off the hands of Josh Norman at the 15-yard line. 
really one of the wasn't a good throw. About the only bad thing I've seen how to do this half. The ball's thrown back behind him. It's just one of those dink routes into the middle, kind of a quick five-yard hitch, and he let it go, and it's thrown behind him. If I would have been Texas, we'd all had a heart attack. But now you, you can't do that right here. Second and 10 at the 19. The Sooners threaten again with 439 to play in the third quarter. Open is Smith. And out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Nine catches today for Trent Smith. What is the record for a tight end here in Oklahoma catching the ball? I know that uh, the great right, Keith Jackson, I can't believe he ever caught nine. Might be a record. Keith Jackson, 13 career touchdown catches. Well, that's a lot different. We're talking about the total catches. But Trent Smith... Nine catches today for over 100 yards. And now has 46 catches on the season. To the middle, Norman has it this time. He didn't drop that one. Pretty darn good catch. I tell you what, the ball was thrown down at his feet. It's the same old post route. Because he's had problems with it throughout the ball game. And again, another possession, another touch. Five in a row for the Sooners. Five straight possessions have resulted in touchdowns, and Josh Norman has this one. Tim Duncan is on for the extra point. And just like that, the Sooners with three touchdowns, their first three possessions of the third quarter. They go 78 yards this time. Brandon Jones was a part of it. And a lot of people took part in this I one. Believe, I believe zoned in. He's looking all the way at the short post. Has it. Good play by the big receiver, Norman. Touchdown, center. Well, they make it look easy sometimes. Great catch. Great catch. Right around the ankle. And Tulsa got to Hibble that time. Here he is again. Just got the D-back beat all over the place. Uh, Tulsa's an awful, awful tired defensive team. Uh, this probably be an opportunity for Coach Stoops to start thinking about Hunter Wall. That's right. He's been the third-team quarterback throughout the season. Elevated a second team with the injury to White. Josh Norman beat true freshman Jeff Thibodeau for the touchdown, number 27 for Tulsa. And you got a feel for the Tulsa defenders who have been on the field a lot. Like I said, uh, if you reach over 70 plays uh, in your defensive football team, we used to have that magic number. We had to play over that. We were like the pitchers that only had so many pitches in the baseball game. Oh, that's just too many times. These guys are way going to be out there if they're not careful. They've reached their pitch drop. That's right. And Tulsa, its best field position of the day, its own 20-yard line, and this one will start at the 20 as well. Another look is Hibble took a licking that time the Tulsa linebacker. This is the nature of that offense. You know, they let guy go. I know one thing. I'd have him over on the bench right now. He'd be over there, hey, signing autographs, hugging people. People would say, hey, I'd have him out. That'd, that'd give me a heart attack. That's all that. James Killian out of Medford is the new quarterback for Tulsa. He gives to Richardson, has some running room up the middle, past the 30 and a first down. Correct me, is that the first team defense out there? Some yeah, members. I see some of them. That probably made Stoops really mad. That long run right there. I tell you, defensive coordinator coordinators are so greedy. And I was one. You, you've got your pitch in your shutout. You don't want to give five yards, much less the first down. Calmus is out there. Calmus is there. Jonathan Jackson, a freshman, playing right in right now. To the 33 yard line, it'll be second down and eight. He's probably got Calmus out there right now because he needs to practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or he's mad at Tulsa for that victory that they got here a few years ago. That's right. He said that uh, the players on this team didn't take a liking to that when they heard that Tulsa beat OU last time they played 31 24 in 1996. <laughs> second and nine from the 33rd. 
Bingham with some time, now scrambling past the 35, and has a first down near the 45. Right. You know, all that uh, relationship got playing people. One year I was at Arkansas State, we were playing Alabama. He is, Coach Brown is wearing me out, 40 to nothing. In the fourth quarter, he puts his first team in. After the game, I said, he said, you played good. And I said, yeah, I know you had your first team in there in the fourth quarter. He looked at me and said, yeah, you had your first team out there too. <laughs> Maybe that's how Stoops feels. <laughs> Their first is out there, his first is going to be there. If you're still trying, I'm still that's trying. Right. Well, what a story James Cooley is. A product of eight-man football here in Oklahoma. Rocky Thomas. Well, you see some patience out of Tulsa, and that's what you have to do in, in, in this position in the ball game. They're not coming here going to throw every down. They're just trying to get better. They're going to stick with their basic running attack, run some clock off, try to make a few first downs. You've got a young quarterback, quarterback in the game. <clears throat> You're going to see the pursuit of, of uh, Calmus right here. This is the problem. That wasn't a bad hole. All of a sudden, if the first one don't get you, the second one does. It was Calmus. Calmus got Kevin McKenzie against his first carry of the day. Second 11. Thomas stops him for a yard loss. Showing blitz. Here they come. That's Harley Payne. The blitz. They brought the house on them, and uh, the young quarterback couldn't react to it, and they didn't pick it up. The crowd acts like it's uh, the play in Nebraska again. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> I like to see that. Roy Williams, who's still in the game. Here they come, 38. Roy Williams. Man, you know, that guy is big, too. He is. He's not a little guy, and he comes in and hits that full quarterback. That's the great thing about Williams. He can blitz, he can play linebacker, he can drop back. Like I said, they play 11 and a half feet. And Medford is used to playing eight-man football. <laughs> Didn't take very many hits like that. But eight-man football stop. wide open. Oh. And the recovery by Derek Strait. Well, they go for the bomb. Not the real bomb, but the semi-bomb. It was at least downfield. It's the first time Tulsa have tried to do that. They need to back those corners up a little bit. Here you see it right here, wide open. Great play by the D-back. You know, everybody cheers him, but he's, his heart's beating because he knows he's beat. He That's knows right. that D-back, that coach, hey, tell him, get on him about the play. Brandon Jones is deep for yet another punt from Lipscomb. All right. Jones has some running room down the sideline to run out of bounds. So Brandon Jones being used for the first time this season on punt returns today and has his first catch as a Sooner. And he got hit hard along the Tulsa sideline that time. Okay, who we got it for now? That will it be is Hibble. Hibble. Okay. Hibble will remain in there with a minute 59 to play here in the third quarter. Sooners start out 63 yards away. I think Coach Stoops is going under the old BCS deal where you beat him as bad as you can. Need half a hundred. Half a hundred. Very there you go. The King is in the building today, too. Elvis is here. What time called as a Hibble trots off. I think he's going back over and saying, Coach, you really want me in here? Maybe you want to see Hunter Wall. <laughs> Mangino. There's Coach Mangino. He looks like he just got out of the Soprano. <laughs> Look to him there. Heck of a coach. Well, I love this kind of guy. Well, let's check in with Zach Klein. Zach? All right, Bill, thank you very much. On the previous possession, it was nice to see Josh Norman catch a touchdown pass because he is going to have to step up. Why? Andre Wolfork, the junior from Denver, uh, Colorado, out for this game. You saw him leave the game in the second quarter with some ice taped around his right leg or his right knee. Obviously, in street close, he will not be back for the second half. So look for the receivers other than Josh Norman to step up here in the third and fourth quarters. Bill? All right, Zach, we look at the play there where Wolfolk was injured, and that could be a costly injury for the Sooners. Not just Wolfolk and what he does offensively, but especially he is the starting cornerback defensively for Oklahoma. And Wolfolk, very talented player, and hopefully he'll be able to come back next week against A&M. Well, we won't know what it is. I probably right. said, is it a sprain? Is it a tear? Is it an ACL? <laughs> we will not know. <laughs> 
So the debate will continue right. on talk radio in Oklahoma this coming week. Add him to the list. Mark Clayton takes the swing pass, dances around, and winds up at the 37-yard line. No gain. Second and ten. Well, the good news is on that play, the best thing that happened on that play period is the guy stayed in bounds. The clock <laughs> continues. The clock runs, and uh, Tulsa's happy. Oklahoma's happy. Keep the clock running. A hibble with over 40 passes today. The Sooners with over 350 yards passing today. Hibble with a big day, throwing the football and looking to throw again. Deep right side, and beyond a diving Curtis Fagan. Well, I know a lot of people think, and I've been kidding about it, that Coach Stoops may be trying to run up the score. That really isn't true. Even though he went downtown, I know he said, oh, they shouldn't be doing that. What he's trying to do here is give Hybel an opportunity to work on these things. This ball, is it's a hard ball to throw. People don't know throwing a deep ball is one of the most difficult things because you can't time it. It's laid out just a hair too long, but they need to hit these kind of passes in those big games where people are crowding them, and I understand why he's out working on that kind of stuff. This don't like it. Yeah, this isn't a story about doing this against Tulsa. It's getting ready for next that's week. That's exactly right. And that's what they're trying to give him the opportunity to do. And a flag down as it's incomplete over the middle of the Clayton this time. It's going to be a hold against the Sooners, it looks like. Going in that vicinity. Their offensive line has not had, uh, doesn't seem like a lot of holding penalties. Uh, they usually do a pretty good job. They get the ball off so quick. He's holding the ball a little bit longer than you normally do, trying to create something. That's how your holding happens a lot of times. They'll decline the hold as the pass was incomplete for the first time since way back in the early stages of this game. The Sooners will not get points out of a possession. They had scored touchdowns in their last five possessions. Jeff Ferguson has not gotten a lot of work today. And Tulsa now will call timeout. So it's a three and out for the Sooners. Well, we've got a young defensive coordinator, a frustrated head coach over there at Tulsa, Coach Burns. They're talking to these people. They're saying, why don't you call timeout? Let the clock run. <laughs> I'll tell you what, exactly what's going on. Really, in these type situations, you call your team up and you say, look here, I don't, I don't want anybody running out of bounds, none of that kind of stuff. Get on the bus and head home. The OU women's basketball team invites you to Come have the time of your life this season at the newly renovated Lloyd Noble Center. Coming off back-to-back -back Big 12 titles and NCAA Sweet 16 appearance, the preseason number one ranked Sooners hit the hardwood against the Horn Frogs of TCU on November 27th at 7 o'clock at Lloyd Noble. Season tickets are available for half off the regular adult admission price. Reserved season tickets are available for the first time in the program's history. Call the OU Athletic Ticket Office at 800 45 six go OU or log on to www.soonersports.com or book your ticket to see the Sooners in action all season long. And after the Tulsa timeout, now Jeff Ferguson is on for the first time since the first quarter. And almost blocked it did Donald Scholes. He's in the halo area. Not halo room. It's a, it's a tough rule. I'm going to see. I bet that goes out of I, out of the college game before it's over. Penalty, penalty's not severe enough. See, Donald Scholes there, he is a playmaker for Tulsa. Normally, he returns punts. Last week, he had a blocked punt, and he almost had a blocked punt this week. <clears throat> well, you've got that little area where a receiver can uh, punt and turn, can fill the ball, whatever that halo is. There's a lot of people breaking through that halo in college football. I keep seeing it and seeing that. I saw where they suspended one guy. Kick catch interference by the kicking team. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. It's surprising this punt wasn't blocked. Golly, he just wow. goes over it the ball. over it. These are the type things. That He's probably, too good an athlete. You know, he's wide open. It had to be a, uh, he had to miss that block with the line of scrimmage. Here's the halo. It's hello, halo. Boom. Boy, that hurts. A five-yard penalty. Best uh, start to a drive for Tulsa. 
29-yard line. Oh, a little quick screen underneath. And it's some running room and a flag. Oh. Really one of the first times the Celtics attempt to throw the ball into the middle of the football field. The bad gun if they get a penalty right here at the time when they get maybe some field position. This is really frustrating to a football team to get a penalty in this situation when they're just fighting for their lives. And they make them a big first down, and now they're going to be backed up again. In the back, 10 yards from the spot of the flag. First down. Yeah. You got, the, you got this block. You're going to be able to sit right here, there right there. 86. Come on, 87. That's Scholes. Man, lie. Well, sometimes that's frustration. That guy's trying to help people out, trying to make an effort. Scholes out to the right side. Two wide receivers to either side. James Gilliam set a national record in eight-man football in Medford. Richardson will sit down in the backfield. One Frisker with the penetration. The center coaches were high on Frisker after preseason drills. You can see why he's getting his first extended playing time here in the second half today. I'm a little surprised they went with him, though. Uh, you know, Gooch hadn't played that much, and I'm sure they're saying, well, I'm worried about it getting hurt. But at the same time, you got Havel out there. I'm having mine out there because uh, Gooch probably needs the experience of playing. James Killian, the redshirt freshman. I didn't mean to make Killian's mother man. She paid for the pay-per-view today, and she has right. to hear that. I'm sorry. I'm glad he's playing this year. <laughs> Trying to make a point. And a flag down here. And will back the hurricane up. You know, Tulsa had done such a good job early in the game of, of not turning the ball over and not holding penalty against the offense. 10-yard penalty, previous spot, with three second down. Now suddenly they move the ball a little bit and they've gotten two penalties. They only have one penalty to half. And now they get two. It's, it's kind of unfair if the officials ever give a good team a penalty when they're down 40 to nothing. Let the game flow. Let it roll. There's 10 seconds left here in the third quarter. Killian, the national record, 11,049 yards of offense. Eight-man football here in the state of Oklahoma. That concludes the third quarter as the clock winds out. And Oklahoma with a lot of offense early on in the third quarter. They scored touchdowns on five straight possessions into the second quarter and on into the third quarter. We go to the fourth, and the Sooners with a sizable advantage over their cross-state rivals. Sooners over the Hurricane, 4-0 through three quarters. It's been a nice afternoon for football. I'm happy you can join us there on Fox Sports Net. Bill Jones along with Larry Lacewell. Tulsa backed up at its own 15 under pressure. Killian is dropped at the five. Well, needless to say, that was a, a linebacker blitz again. And, oh, there's no mercy shown by the Sooners or the Stoops. Uh, the Stoops brothers, they came after the young quarterback, and that's, uh, again, there is no mercy. Those starting linebackers, Calvis and Lehman, combined for that one. And now third and long. Very long. Third and 34. Run the ball. Looks to throw. Hit in the end zone and is incomplete. Well, they're giving uh, the young quarterback Killian. Never would like this late man football, I promise you. <laughs> He's seeing 11. They got three extra guys out there chasing him. That's pretty tough. You'll see right here again, this is the pressure the center's put on him all day long. He, he's back to throw, going to make a good throw. Bam! It's a wonder he didn't have a knee problem right there. It's a tough place to hit a quarterback. Rocky delivers the hit. Lipscomb deep in his own end zone. Brandon Jones stands at the Tulsa 42 awaiting the punt. Center's almost got to it. 
From the 39, Jones to his right. Room up the middle. Still on his feet. Inside the 10. Hey, well, Jones is a big, strong back. I don't, I don't he, uh, uh oh, a little extra celebration. But Jones, the thing I like about the guy goes north south with the football. A lot of time you get toe dancers, you get those guys, jitterbugs, the only guy, so I like Joe Orson doing it. But this guy here is a north south runner. You Good like man. that. Personal foul against the kicking team. Half the distance to the goal. Well, it's oh, his wow. personal oh, foul right. against Tulsa. Yeah. But Brandon Jones. From the 39 down to the 7, a 32-yard return. You see the guy right here. He goes straight down that field. He is so big and strong. Watch him break the tackle. He went right down the white line. I'm getting better. <laughs> right there. You see it all the time. Getting the hang of that at your right. sketch. I really do like a north-south runner. So often you get guys that sit back there and they try to miss this guy, miss this guy. Very few people can do that. Take it. Make positive yards. Make us a first man. But Brandon Jones averaging better than 10 yards a return today on his four returns. And Hunter Wall will take his first snap from center. Well, second snap. He also took one on the touchdown catch he made against Kansas State. But the first time as a quarterback, he was the up back in the punt formation when he scored that touchdown on the trick play. I said early, he is a Capel Cowboy. I saw him play in high school. By the way, that's where I live in Capel, Texas, and they have an outstanding high school football program there. And like I said earlier, it seemed like only yesterday I watched this guy play high school football, and I thought he was a big leaguer. He's a big, big quarterback. I don't know that he's the future at quarterback. They think he can play a lot of different places, but they need this guy to get some experience. Yeah, the uncertain status of Jason White the rest of the year. Hunter Wall, the back up to Hibble. He'll play this fourth quarter, loses the football, and he tries to get it back, but Tulsa has it. That's the reason. You know, uh, he probably pulled away from the center a little bit too soon. He's nervous, he's scared, he jumps in there. You never know if exactly whose fault it is. Uh, most of the time, the offensive line coach says it's the quarterback's fault. The backfield coach says it's the offensive line's fault. So you never really know, but if we can watch right here, let's see if he moves away. His hands were a little wide, he was a little leaning a little bit, probably a little nervous on his part. Larry, do you think that Cabell Cowboy has been watching too much of the Dallas Cowboys this year? Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, we've only had four different quarterbacks fumbling. We've got to believe maybe it's Stepnoski. <laughs> he didn't do it though with Aikman. I think our guy's a little more nervous than Aikman. <laughs> well, Killian gets to do it again from his own three-yard line. Under pressure. That incomplete. I'm amazed they're not near as conservative with Killian as they was with Gooch. You know, first and ten, you think they'd run the ball a little bit and give him a little bit more run, a little bit more room. But they're coming out of here like uh, like maybe he is uh, Jerry Rome. Jerry Rome, name another out. name from the Tulsa quarterback. They had Gus Farrakh. That's right. E.J. Rubley. Pretty good quarterback. Better pro quarterbacks in Oklahoma's ever had. Jim Finks. That's right. Go way back to Glenn Dobbs. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't mean to get that thing. <laughs> He's second and ten from the three. Feed option safety. Nope. Put the ball the football out beyond the goal line. Yes, it is. Yes, like. On Brisker thought he had the safety. Um, we can check it out. I think it was not a safety myself. I think the ball, the quarterback was able to land the ball right as he was hit. We'll see him come down this line right here. Watch his right hand. Watch him reach out. Pretty good job of that quarterback. Yep. Here he comes right here. He's coming right here. Reach. You'll see my finger right there. It's right across that white line. Awful good job of that quarterback of not getting the safety. Some of the reserves in there on the defensive line. Christian almost got the safety here, and Elby is in the game as well for the Sooners. The red shirt freshman. This can be bad news for Tulsa because they got fresh defensive linemen in there, Oklahoma does, and them guys are hungry. They don't get to play. They practice all week. They've been over there. They had not broke the sweat yet. But, man, they can you. They are licking their chops and this kind of down to come after the quarterback. I bet you if I were them, Tulsa, once again, I would sprint to my right. 
get away from the rush and throw the football. I don't think I've tried an option. I don't think they're going to do what I said. Tough to penalize them much back there. Drop back pass. Quarterback hit. Incomplete. A lot of pressure on the quarterback. Not much chance. Not a bad thought, though. What they're thinking is, if we throw it deep, they intercept it, it's as good as a punt. And they've got a lot of punting to do today. They've had a lot. Now they're going to be doing it again. Keith Burns, Hurricane. 12 minutes away from a seventh straight loss. And Brandon Jones averaging better better than 20 yards of return and it's 16.3 Aw awful tough on a punter here he can't step out of the end zone he's got his feet square he's got to be careful with the ball he's got to get it off quick two steps boom not bad got it away and jones takes it from the 36 with running room just as soon as i brag on him about going north south he starts going east and west he starts thinking he's a good running back it was a nine-yard return for Jones that time, and the Sooners with great field position again for a Hunter Wall who gets a second chance when we come back. Sooners all over Tulsa today with just under 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter of this one. 41-0 Oklahoma over Tulsa. Hunter Wall, the backup quarterback to Nate Hibble. Have another chance here. A great field position at the Tulsa 28-yard line. Well, they've turned the centers turned this into arena ball. I mean, they got a half field to go the whole game. I mean, about 50 yards. Pretty tough on the defense. Deep right side, Brandon Jones over his head out of bounds. Incomplete. One of the rare times, uh, Tulsa Blitz. They came after the, the young quarterback. They didn't get there. They picked it up. Uh, the Sooners did. They gave the young quarterback plenty of time. His problem was probably nerves again. Too strong an arm. Let it go deep. Too far. Hunter Wall, who was a terrific basketball player right. at Coppell, averaged 18 points, 9 rebounds. He's a preseason All-American prior to his senior year. And recruited by a lot of schools, and a lot of schools wanted to play a position other than quarterback. Well, they went to a little conservative pass here this time. Just give him something to settle down. It's typical of OU offense, however. Quick screen, line up the three receivers, throw it out to one of them, let him make five or six yards. I'm sure Hunter Wall <laughs> feels better about himself now. He's got a little something going. Uh, it's got to be a nervous experience for a youngster to come off this bench and play. I don't care against two. down for Wall here. Sooners need six yards. And incomplete over the middle. Lance Dunley, back up tight end. Sophomore out of Weatherford. Well, he went to his friend, and his friend wasn't there, and he didn't throw it very good. It was a little bit thrown to the wide. He's going to have to settle down because they're going to need this young man, I'm afraid, before the season's over. And he'll get out of these type things. That was a pretty easy throw for him. He just didn't make it. Yeah, even if it was just for a series or two during a the game, they might need him. I Wall. promise you. The type of opposition they have on down the stretch. Tim Duncan, the field goal try. As the distance, and good. I think they're glad to see that. I think they've been pretty inconsistent in the kicking game. That gives them an opportunity to work on this. Three for three today is Tim Duncan on his field goals. And it's a 44 to nothing lead for the Sooners with just over 11 minutes to go in this one. All Oklahoma. <laughs> the short kickoff by Tim Duncan as we are back here at Owen Field. And handled by Roundtree. And Tulsa will start with one of its best uh, field position spots of the day. It's on 21 yard line. You know that returner for Tulsa was happy to see that kick. He didn't have to blow his body up through all those guys. <laughs> and he's been doing it a lot this, this uh, quarter in the second quarter. 
And Gooch is back in there at quarterback. All right, he did what I said. There's a call you just did. <laughs> From the 21-yard line, Tyler Gooch has been out a while. This kid's got a future. That was a good decision by him. It was a bootleg pass. They faked it inside. Here's his, his speed, his ability to get outside the center defense, which is not easy. He didn't try to make the great throw. He turned up in there and made him six or seven yards running the football. And there you see one of the reasons why Keith Burns made the switch to Tyler Gooch at quarterback because he has the threat of the run as well as the pass. Josh Blinken Blinkenship had started four games this year for Tulsa. And he, just a junior. Pretty good execution on the quick slam. Landrum to the 33. Good way to look like a football team, Tulsa. I tell you what, Coach Burns has got an awful young football team here, and to see him competing this way, trying to move the football offensively, that's a ray of hope for them. They'll get better, I guarantee you, if they'll stick with these guys, because he's an enthusiastic guy. He knows how to coach football. He's just having a tough, tough season right now. But this is a ray of hope right here. I really do believe that with this young quarterback. And the assignments are easier on down the road for Tulsa the rest of the way. With three games left after this one. Assignments don't get much tougher than this today. That is Kevin McKenzie, not much there. Brandon Moore in on the stop, among others. Well, they don't get any easier when you've got to play. I mean, this is the hardest you can ever get when you have a great... You know, everybody can have off days when you play. You can go play the Tulsa's and people like that when you're OU. You, the defense just never have an off day, seriously. I, I was here too many times when our offense turned the ball over seven or eight times, but, but we shut down people because it wasn't we, by the way. It was the, it was the speed of our defense to sell them. We weren't going to have bad days. There's no U defense had not either. On the 33. Here we come. Screen got it off and complete. Eric Richardson out of Duncanville, Texas. Well, there was my screen pass. Again, that's worked twice for him. At least they're kind of trying to slow down the rush. And Goose did a heck of a job of executing this. He's got that guy coming down, bearing down. That takes a little courage to stand in there saying, hey, I'm going to get through this ball, but they're fixing to really tear my head off. This was a good play by him on the screen. Sooners with many reserves in the game now. Good for them. Third down. About five. Four-man rush. All right. Scholes near the first down marker. Go for Scholes. Why not? Aaron Allen in on the stop that time for the Sooners. Backup linebacker. Red shirt freshman out of West Orange start. Keith Burns, the coach for Tulsa, doesn't like to see his leading receiver go off limping Shoals. I like the decision uh, if they'll go for it. Heck, you, you have nothing to lose right here. Give your team a little, oh, they made the first down. I bet you... You like that to happen so you don't have to make that kind of decision in front of everybody out here thinking you're tired if you didn't do it. You see Brent Venables, co-defensive coordinator for the Sooners, alongside Mike Stoops. How about this coaching staff for the Sooners? How about this cold defensive thing? <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? They Was vote? that of work back they in the 70s? Uh, Jimmy John, Jimmy Johnson and I had killed each other. He was on the, <laughs> Jimmy was on the staff. I was the defensive coordinator. It wouldn't work. My ego was too big. No, <laughs> yeah, hey, your his, ego. his wasn't a little either. <laughs> Speed option, pitch it. And reversing his field is Richardson. And there's a lot of east-west running there. Well, <laughs> trying to make something out of it. I guess most teams, you can reverse your field. But... And against this defense, if you try to reverse your field, you're going to go in reverse because these guys can all flat run. They can recover. They looked out of position there for one second, and then all of a sudden, here come the swarm of red jerseys again. That's Brandon Shelby, number five there, red shirt freshman out of Rockhurst High School. You're going to see the speed option come down the line. This guy gets blocked in front of him. He catches the ball. Here we go. Here I go. Boom, boom, boom. But watch right up through here. Watch right up through here. Here come the red. Look at here. Four guys. Gooch is hit. Shelby, a busy man. Brandon Shelby with the sack. 
Bradman has had been a busy guy. You're right. They'll be the, the backups in the secondary getting a chance. Another young guy on this Oklahoma team. We talked about how young Tulsa is. Oklahoma's young, too. Exactly. You know, they uh, have recruited well. It looks, you know, the future really looks bright for them. Sprint pass. Deep downfield, Landrum is behind the defender. He's too long for it. That's about as hard a pass for a quarterback as you can get. When, you, when you're going to your left and you've got to switch your hips and throw the ball 10 yards, that's hard enough. But when you're going to the bomb down the field, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Well, watch him coming out here. Watch him switch his hips. Switch your hips, throw the ball, good tight sparrow. Really a nice ball, just too long. This, this quarterback, he has a future. That was Quentin Morgan defending. The transfer from the University of Washington, who has played some on offense, some on defense, getting a chance on defense today. Trying to find some running room is Brandon Jones. You know, the one thing I noticed, and I, I don't know a lot about this halo rule in, in, in uh, college football, works, doesn't work. I, nobody fair catches. They either get the living, uh, they, get, <laughs> you know they get hit hard. It was <laughs> <laughs> really. I've never seen anything like it. I thought that guy was going to fair catch up. But the guy had to slow down to not, get, no in, reason to not get in the halo. Let's check in with Zach Klein downstairs. Zach? All right, Bill, thank you very much. I'm joined by uh, Josh Heupel, led the Sooners to a 13-0 record last year, national championship. And for the first time, it's seeing the game this year from the sidelines. A little different view, huh, Josh? Yeah, a lot of different view. I actually got my first taste of what it's like on game day outside the stadium. I had a good time. A couple burgers down there on the sideline, a little, a little barbecue? Uh, no burgers. I'm trying to lose weight. I got a little uh, heavy when I was sitting uh, a month on the couch. We'll get to the injury in a little bit. You are tight with a couple of the quarterbacks. You know, Jason White went down and told me it's kind of taking a little tough. How's he holding up? Yeah, he's doing well. Uh, it's a tough situation. Obviously, he worked very hard uh, to get a chance, and when he got a chance, he played very well. Uh, I know he's looking forward to trying to get back out there and uh, see if he can play. Hunter Wall stepped into the fourth quarter. How do you think he's progressing so far? Uh, he's doing well. Uh, first nap, a little jittery underneath center, but uh, Hunter's going to do well. You can see he's got a great athleticism and uh, gets the ball out uh, to his wide receiver. And as for you were drafted by the Miami Dolphins, had a surgery on your left wrist. How are things holding up, and what's the future looking like for you? My uh, surgery went real well. Hoping to get healthy here in the next month and a half. And, uh, not bad, huh? No, not bad. Exactly. I, think I, was, I think I was a little faster than he was. Uh, is it the number 14 jersey? Is that what it was with the speed? Uh, there might be something special about it. All right, Bill, send it back to you upstairs. All right, we're in Josh Heupel's number 14, and Hunter Wall almost broke that one. I think they're running all these options, really. It, it, for Switzer, myself, and that other team, the team that won 47 in a row. This guy is no speed demon by any means, but all their quarterbacks are, right now are such big, strong guys. Uh, I know this kid has to feel great about it to make that kind of run. It'll be on TV down in Dallas. He'll be thrilled <laughs> to death. 42 yards on the run by Hunter Wall. Longest run of the day, right? That's right. And he's running great, great decision. Who's in the game? Quentin Griffin. You can see the quarterback gained a little confidence now. He sat back and read his, read his projection, went downfield, saw the coverage was there, dropped the ball off on the swing route. That's a lot harder to do for a young quarterback and people who realize you want to go back so often and just get rid of the ball. Don't stand there with it. But, hey, he was poised. He did the right thing. You know, I, I like his name, too. i got to think about quarterbacks. you got to have a, the right kind of name. Hunter, Hunter Wall. There's something about that. That's right. And big guy. Good looking guy. 15 yard line. Second and one for the Sooners. And Ronaldo works. Up to the 10 yard line. Takes a little reverse and handles the tail back right up the middle. Work. Good looking play. First down for this Hunter Wall led drive for the Sooners. Yeah, I've always said the quarterback, the real good one has to be good looking. <laughs> no, I mean it. You know, Joe Namath was, Aikman was, Elway was. You, you can't be a bad-looking guy and be a great quarterback. This guy's a good-looking guy, so I'm just stuff. <laughs> Josh Heupel. The list goes on and on. Whoops! Touchdown, Oklahoma! <laughs> to wreck over around here many, many times. They've hung, they have hung, half a hundred of them. It's a famous 
Pittsburgh. The Bears for half a hundred. Right. Going for half a hundred plus one. Man, that's tough. Right? And I've been on this end of the field. I hope people don't think I'm making fun. You get in this coaching profession, you know what's going to happen. When you schedule the Oklahomas or you schedule those kind of teams, and you're a young, young football team that's been beat up a lot, this can happen to you. Ronaldo works as his sixth touchdown of the year. And the Sooners with half a hundred plus one. It's 51 to nothing Sooners. Here we go. Little fake draw. Hand back. It's a typical play they run all the time. This one broke. The back made a good cut. Broke, broke a tackle. Griffin and Works have combined for five touchdowns today. 73-yard drive. Of course, the big play was Hunter Wall's 48-yard run, 42-yard run. And the Sooners with nearly 500 yards, now over 500 yards of offense today, 523 yards of offense, 161 on the ground, 362 through the air. And have held Tulsa to just 115 total yards. Bob Stoop Sooners taking on Texas A&M next week. And the Aggies will be looking to bounce back. Final score from Lubbock this afternoon. Texas Tech 12, Texas A&M nothing. Man, man, that one looms awfully, awfully big. Boy, the one in Lubbock for two weeks. The Aggies are big next week. Definitely a roadblock in Lubbock two weeks from now. Well, like I said earlier, you know, all the white meat's gone, brother. Hey, <laughs> we got Texas A&M coming in here. If they can hold, they can hold uh, Texas Tech 12 points out there, that's a pretty, pretty good deal. And then they got to go to Tech. And let me tell you, the Aggies never lay down and die. So that's going to be a tough three-game deal. But I tell you, Stoops is so optimistic. He amazes me. If he ever wants to get out of coaching, he ought to go into that Zig Ziglar field. <laughs> he, he's a guy that everything's always great. You know, we played great. The center played good. The freshmen played great. Quarterbacks are okay. They're not hurt. I love his attitude. I've never seen a coach have less excuses than him. And it filters down to his team, too. Makes them feel good about it. I believe that. Incomplete pass. But it is remarkable. I don't know where he got it. You know, I, I mean, even his brother, I said uh, yesterday, I said, you know, coming off playing in Nebraska, an option team, uh, and have to go against this one back throwing team or any one back throwing team after you face Nebraska, is that hard to do? And he's, oh, no, it's not hard to do. We've already faced that kind of stuff four times in a row. <laughs> Use no excuse. No excuse. There you see the winning percentage of the head coaches at Oklahoma. Switzer topping the chart. Bud is second, and Bob is third. Tulsa trying to run the clock. Good for them. Run it out. DJ Barnett on the carry. It's been a nice weekend for you, Larry, to be up here and be able to see some of your old cronies up here, including Barry and, and others. Really saw a lot of heroes. You know, that team that was uh, 47 in a row, I was here as a coach, and I used to hear about all those guys all the time. And, and to see uh, Tommy McDonald, Jerry Tubbs, uh, Jake Stanford, for those guys, it, it was fun for me. Tommy McDonald's still quite a character. Oh, oh man. By the halftime interview with Jack Clyde. Back at the 10-yard line, a bunch of Sooners in on that one. A little zone blitz, two linebackers firing. They've been doing it all day, and of course, this is their style. And the Tulsa quarterback, needless to say, has had a tough time with it most of the day. And Brandon Moore, Aaron Helvey, number 79, a redshirt freshman out of Edmund North was in there. Now, Brandon Moore plays a lot. Yes, he does, but he didn't play a lot early in this game. He's had more playing time here late in the Normally a starter at linebacker. Right. Sooners used a lot of five defensive backs early on in this game. Right, they did. The one back set creates that. Uh, when you don't play a lot of, they have a lot of tight end in offense. We call it a nipple package. You take out one linebacker, put in an extra deep up. And Brandon Jones back to inside his own 40, finds the handle on it. There he goes. Go. Seed and found one. Brandon Jones down the sideline, oh, no. five-yard line. 
I think the whole, everybody out there ran out of gas. <laughs> I think he tackled himself. No, what happened right now? How many punts has Tulsa had to cover? Just think about that. That's about probably eight or nine or ten uh, 50 yard sprints. That wears you out. And the uh, guy makes a great old, he almost fumbled the ball. He picks it up. He did just like I said, north south. No, he didn't. Here he comes. I tell you, this guy's a thick, strong guy. I think he may find something here. He's a good runner, he's a, but he's out of gas, and so is everybody else right along here. Oh, you like to see that. Young players step in and form that play. I don't talk to tired, tired. 12 punts in the last seven well, straight possessions have ended go. in a punt. I said if they could punt 13 times and not turn it over, uh, it would be a pretty decent game. They're right on track. Touchdown. A wide open. Antoine Savage back in the game. And there was nobody within 15 yards of it that didn't appear. Well, that was just a bust of the salmon. I felt the Tulsa has really done a pretty good job of being in the right place. They were out athlete a whole lot. Their athletes weren't quite as good as Oklahoma's. But that was a bust of the salmon. Believe it or not, you could have scored. <laughs> Even me, I would have had to catch the ball, though. <laughs> Hunter Wall has caught a touchdown pass this year, and he has now thrown a touchdown pass. Go Cowboys, and I don't mean the ones up the road, or the down. The Coppell Cowboys. A five-yard drive after the long punt return by Brandon Jones. So Hunter Wall gets a chance. Hey, there, good looking guy, big guy. Good little movie star looking like. Now, Hamley, what's his head? Come on. Come on. You having trouble with that name, Hibble? <laughs> Hibble, Hibble. <laughs> it's a lot like Hypo. I'm going to get it out here in a minute. <laughs> well, the OU Athletic Department has a new way to talk sports with fans, students, and alumni. OU TV. With OU TV, you can receive high-quality, full-screen video and audio presentations delivered right to your personal computer. Visit the Sooners official athletic website, www.soonersports.com. Click on to the OU TV icon to learn more about this weekly Sooner Sports Report. The first 500 subscribers will receive a special introductory rate for the first year of service, so don't delay. Sign up for OU TV now. But Brandon Jones, the Sooner fans look at this game, the emergence of him today could be a key down the stretch. As a punt returner, he has really shown what he can do, and so the coaches are high on him as a wide receiver as well. Well, this is exactly the kind of game uh, the Sooners uh, were looking forward to. They started sluggish, but, uh, you know, they've come out here and they played the way. I, I can't really think of anything they did wrong in second half. They, they're probably going to have to go back and work on the center bobbing his rear end uh, <laughs> a little bit, too. But that, that's about it. It it's re really looked like a machine here in the second half. That's a successful afternoon if the next week in practice you only have to worry about the center bobbing his rear end. That's, that's pretty good. Pretty good. They got some things to concern themselves with, though, this week. The a &M, a smarting Aggie team after losing today. Well, A&M also did a great job of defense. I, I was at the game a year ago, and I think A&M was the first one to kind of send a message to how to defense. You know, defensive coordinators, uh, we kind of steal things from other people, and and it's natural when you see somebody do it. Well, once after Jack a and played that style, everybody else played that style in Oklahoma and kind of started slowing them down a little bit, even though they went on and had the great season. And I think A&M knows how to defense this thing pretty good. Happy to say, hoping for a better showing than they had two years ago here. That was the 51-6 Oklahoma win over A&M. Well, this kind of offense will do it to you. It's kind of like going against the wishbone. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't have the athletes, you're really in trouble. And at the same time, even though they got beat out at uh, Lubbock by 12 points, you know, they only gave up, I don't know if they gave up any touchdowns. The 12 points is pretty good when you hold Texas Tech for that kind of score out there. And uh, this is going to be a heck of a game for, for the Sooners next week. How much does it help A&M coaches, defensive coaches, having played Tech the week before? they play oh you just like nebraska had it chance. helps them immensely the scout team knows how to execute things it's the 
sweep to the right side and out of bounds, knocked out over there. No, that's exactly right. And, and you don't like to see that. I tell you, the guy going to Texas Tech has not helped Oklahoma. You know, people get to see what he's doing. They're very, very similar. And now, Texas Tech, you know, Texas A&M's defense will see almost the exact offense. That happened so many times this year, just the way the schedule has worked out. OU's opponent, previous opponent, was Texas Tech. Well, also, though, the good news is you do know how they're going to beat them. So at least you get to go out, put in your trick plays, put in your new thing, because I doubt if a and changes at all. No quick screen, no completion. Inside the 45 to the 44, that is Montez Colton out of Duncanville, Texas. Red shirt freshman. Well, Tussle Heck can, can gain a few things from this. I think the quarterback shows a few signs that he can be a good athlete. And as I've said a thousand times, people get tired here. Get tired here in the head coach center. We're a young team. They, they want it now. But if they'll bear with this thing, they, they'll get something. Well, they'll be a better football team, probably. Whoa, William in trouble. Gets rid of it. Incomplete. This kind of way we start. A lot of pressure coming at the quarterback. He's at it all day. And Oklahoma will need some kind of this kind of pressure the rest of the season out of their defense. Their defense can salvage it. Can salvage it. I sound like it's all over because they lost the game. <laughs> but their defense can carry them through if the offense can do something. And I mean by that is they've got to be able to generate the kind of offense that moves the ball, moves the chain, they don't have to score a lot. Pick up the blitzing linebacker that time, and Quentin oh. Morgan oh. has and drops the interception. Good, he had it. Oh, he had it. He does have it. Quentin Morgan. He either has it or tells him quick. <laughs> They're going off. They're all going off. Morgan, a wide receiver who plays defensive back and well, plays it well there. Really got, really got an outstanding jump. I'm impressed with, uh, I don't see much drop off here. Guys they've had in the ball game, their, their pass rush has been about the same. Their, their deep back, you know, I was talking to Merv Johnson, assistant uh, that leg director here. Good news is, too, on the offensive line. They got three freshmen playing in the offensive line, in the first, second team. They got three redshirt freshmen in the offensive line. So, like I said, the future is really bright. Yeah, Wes Sims has been out with the injury. We are to the final minute of this one, and the Sooners are going to down it. Jamal Brown, a redshirt freshman, played a lot at right tackle today. And Jared Fields. Out of Bandera, Texas, another one of those offensive linemen you're talking about. Of course, Vince Carter, who has started so much at center. Well, this is uh, every winning coach, or any coach's favorite formation. They're going down the ball. They're all grouped in there. Formation I haven't seen in Dallas a lot lately. Hope to see it more. A 58 to nothing Oklahoma win over Tulsa, and Hunter Wall gets an opportunity here in the fourth quarter, throws a touchdown pass. Josh Heupel has the sooner record for most completions in a game, and Nate Hibble almost matched it today, as Hibble completed 36 passes. Heupel has the school record with 37 completions against Baylor two years ago, but Hibble was 36 out of 48. And uh, depending on the status for Jason White next week, there's Heifel. I have the record for saying Heifel or Hippel. Or Hippel, Hippel. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'll probably say that today. The Bob Stoop Sooners walk away winners once again here at home. That's 18 in a row. Home victories for the Sooners. And they do it in lopsided fashion over Keith Burns. Tulsa Golden Hurricane. There will be better days ahead for Tulsa down the road. And Bob Stoops is hoping for more of the same down the road as the Sooners will return to Big 12 play next week here at Owen Field against Texas A&M. Quentin Griffin with a big day, four touchdowns, and combined for around 150 yards of total offense. The Sooners as a team with 550 yards of total offense today. And the offense got going, and there's one of the emerging stars for Oklahoma, Brandon Jones, with a big day returning kicks. Back in a moment at Owen Field. 
A 20-game win streak snapped last week in Nebraska. Perhaps the Sooners have started another winning streak today in a big way over cross-state rival Tulsa, 58 to nothing, and Larry Lacewell, a big lopsided win for the Sooners today. Well, it's exactly what they wanted. The quarterback didn't get hurt. The quarterback played good. They scored touchdowns. The defense did their job. Uh, they've got a lot of work to do with that center. Uh, Bobby <laughs> Green. That, that's about it. <laughs> Vince Carter. The work will continue. A little concerned, though, about Andre Wolfolk, who had to leave the game with a knee injury. We'll figure out during the coming week just the extent, perhaps, of the knee injury suffered by Andre Wolfolk. Larry Lacewell, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Same to me. Great to be back with the Sooners for this day. All right. For Larry Lacewell, Zach Klein, and our entire crew, this is Bill Jones saying good afternoon from Norman. Once again, our final 58 to nothing Sooners over the Golden Hood.